Word. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Hey. hey, what are you doing here? Hey, I'm back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I just I'm, been at the gym. I'm back, baby. You thought you could hold me down? That whole thing was the act. That, I mean, sorry. That whole thing was reality. This is the act. We really did hate each other. How, wow. many, how many messages did you get after? Whoopsie. Not as many as... Shut up, phone. Not as many as before, because originally... Um, <clears throat> initially, like, I got a lot of messages being like, what the hell? What's happening? But then as soon as I'm back, to, like, I got, like, one being like... Man, you got me good. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I got a lot. Nah, of I got you a got me. Oh yeah, Central. I got a, I got a lot. I got a lot of you got me too. I think we should. You know what Sandy's just, response was? What? I can't hear anything. What? I was looking at the chat later. There was all these people being like, "Oh Doesn't my god, Miss Love's such a dick. How could he do that to Ali?" <laughs> and in the midst of all of that is Sandy that says, "Quote: This is cringe." Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she knew it. So well, of no course point. she did because yeah. she <laughs> talks. I think she talked to Miss Love, what, two hours before that? <laughs> <laughs> he was there. Also, all, all the move- didn't deteriorate that quickly. You went out and got a loan after business hours <laughs> for an electric car. Yes, but having said that, there was a lot of people that were saying, <sighs> let's start a GoFundMe for Ali's car. I'm just going to put it on the record. I am not opposed to that one bit. <laughs> <laughs> not, you want the car. I am very supportive of that idea, but I will leave that up to you. Well, also, <laughs> while we're here and we're talking about fundraisers, yeah, the animals are doing it tough, specifically mice that are drowning in the mice plague that is hitting at the same time as a fly. What? Is this just... Uh, We're going to talk about that medieval. on the main pod, but mm-hmm. I do not like the fact that you just quickly diverted my GoFundMe to shit that actually matters. Yeah, well, that's so a good thing. what do you, you think they're like going to do? GoFundMe for this guy on the pod who barely works for a living or like <laughs> saving species. So really don't You're appreciate You're a species. That. Yeah, that's true. I'm a species. You're a species. And Same. let's be honest, you will get 90% of the donations. <laughs> oh, we will. Even Miss Love will, you know, everybody needs a car. Just like, yeah, yeah. Just like <laughs> Pakistanis as well as field mice, two endangered species and the fawns. Hey, <laughs> I want an electric car. Look, we've got to, we've got to, we, we will get to that because that's one of the pod segments. But, but in the meantime, I'm get Ali read. a Tesla. <laughs> I think that, that is the real initiative. Well, here. maybe not a Tesla. Even something Laura would do. You know? No, no, no. <laughs> Tesla or bust. It has to be an electric car. None of this, no, nothing else. Do you know no. how expensive it is? This yeah, Tony Roberts really seminar today. I don't know. He was talking for an hour about child slavery is bad. Let's all together put in $200,000 so we can save some kids from slavery. Wow. But. That's cool. That's not even one Tesla, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is that how much they are? That's what I'm saying. I think. I are will. they like 500,000? Let's just. Uh, here I'm, we go. Again, Did you put, it, put it out there on the record. <laughs> hybrid would do as well. Just, just saying. It does Hard, work. What? So, hybrid. <laughs> oh, hybrid would do. <laughs> More what, hang on. What, so you're going to settle for a Corolla? Well, I'm Honda look, Civic. I said hybrid. I didn't say Corolla. I mean, if I'm getting <laughs> some extra injection of liquidity, then you know it could become some other hybrid. Oh, you're talking about one of those hybrids that they uh, discuss on, um, you know, Top Gear on Amazon, whatever it's called. Well, yeah. not a supercar. The problem yeah, with Tesla is, I like Teslas, but you know, once I buy the car because of you know the fundraiser or whatever, I'm still gonna have to like maintain it, which is very <laughs> expensive for a Tesla. Is it? Yeah, the parts are expensive. Everything's Fuck. expensive. Man, so like, make I, I, them Because ugh. unless I am going to cons- consistently get a stream of GoFundMe, I think getting a, a Corolla hybrid would probably be a wiser option. You know what would be amazing if the next uh, most popular electric car brand on earth is called White Elephant? Wouldn't that be yeah. sick? Why? What Why? a name. Well, you know is what a white rare? elephant is, right? A rare elephant? The king of Thailand used to give out white elephants to the aristocracy as a sign of status, but the reality was that they're just so expensive to maintain that he was crippling them of funds to ever <laughs> uprise against him. Yeah. Isn't what? That a genius Are you fucking Sri serious? Sri yeah. Lankan Prime Minister still do that shit. And it, Give out elephants. Problem. Did you yeah, did what you hear about fuck? how Cher was in Pakistan trying to save this elephant? 
Cher. Well, yeah, Cher. No. Like the oh, no, I did hear about that, actually. Because there was this, one of the She's Sri still Lankan alive. prime ministers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, and harder than ever. <laughs> yeah, taking a lot of tax <laughs> dollars. She is a very hot 70-year-old. <laughs> yeah, but it's taking a lot of tax dollars to keep uh, her in that shape, you know. Tax dollars? Tax dollars. Well, I don't know. I'm sure some of her plastic surgeries <laughs> well, are you think subsidized. She's famous for being like a PBS radio host. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get tax dollars either. That's a <laughs> private company. Is it? I'm pretty sure. Isn't it subsidized by the government at least like wheat is? I don't think so. Well, how could something be so boring and not government subsidized? <laughs> <laughs> I think plastic surgery uh, would also be somewhat subsidized. Would it? No, not in if America. It's like, what if you get burnt in the bushfire? Is it then subsidized? So that's a share was no, in the front No, it's not lines. a cinch. <laughs> hey, she was in the <laughs> front line. Dude, dude, dude. Wait, I'm not smart enough to think of do this it. on the go, but wait. Let me give wait, you one a share song? Yeah, I was just going to be like, do you be like, you no, know, you know what it should be? Minute. Her jumping into the fire to save a koala, the koala dying and her face melting as she's singing. If I could turn back to, and then, and then this, <laughs> do you believe in love? No, life after fires. <laughs> I was trying to get a good line, but I can't, couldn't get them to rhyme. No, I mean, to be honest, the original <laughs> word, just that good. is why Miss Love's back on the pod. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean to be honest, <laughs> that is why this is pretty much his job. I mean, to be <laughs> to be honest, the original <laughs> lyric is actually more appropriate. Do you believe in life after lo- love? love? No, no, it's not. Life. Look, I'll, I'll get- I'll, What a I'll, sad I'll, point in your life. I'll get life back in a few hours. You are making a song about that topic. <laughs> well, well, that love. is, well, she's pretty much saying, I've been in three different years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. She's basically being like, you know, do you believe in life after love on the hit album 47 and still hoping for love? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what that should have been called. Yeah. Whatever that album well, was. Well, look, we'll keep some of the musings for later because this is the pre show and let's answer some questions. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. You First want. question is Jordan. Why aren't you talking to Destiny? Are you scared? (laughs) Yeah, probably. He definitely owned me. His entire job is owning people. Who's Destiny? And my job, you really really don't understand. Everyone's always saying, you should debate so-and-so. I don't know how to debate people. I think that was well established in my epic battle with Satyajit. Then again, that guy, he was like a champion debater. And he's kind of like he 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 slid himself in a very unethical manner. Like if if yeah. I bring a friend just outright over, confidently lying. If I bring yeah. a friend over and just like, hey, this is my friend. He just wanted to get some of share some of his ideas about I don't know nuclear power without telling you that he spends like I don't know twenty hours every day doing this and tr- coming up with ideas of like how to own you. It's a but little you held your dog. Own. But the thing is, he, he wasn't. That's the whole thing. He wasn't even talking about nuclear power. He was talking. He, he was there to shit on renewables because he is a mm. Coke Brothers yeah. plant. <laughs> that and is now bizarre. he's in the US. Isn't that insane? That's some Alex Jones shit. That you went to a uni and an, uh, a, a Coke Brothers plant came up to him and mean like, "Look at the numbers, man!" And you just and then you yeah. looked it up and it was like, "He's essentially a spy, basically a spy." Or at least a the Steve spy. Buscemi meme of. How do you do, my fellow students? I yeah. am just a humble uh, student of law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and then, like, <laughs> you Google his name and he's on Sky News trying to defend yeah. all. And Fox. Yeah. 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 Everything. And, like, that's he was that's his, guy. like, cross to die on. Like, defending coal and, like, amping up cigarettes. <laughs> it's a weird, evil cross to die on. But you held your own pretty well in that. Very well. I would say to the point where you were being... Look, I don't know the like the ethics of debate. You didn't Ben Shapiro him of just using emotional tactics and like shooting him down. You actually like, okay, I don't know that tactic. I don't know that number. So I'll look it up. I'll give you the benefit, benefit of the doubt. But I think that's actually like a moral stance. Well, this is the whole thing that I realized. Somebody actually articulated it really well in the comments where they said, how are you supposed to debate against someone who is confidently lying? Yeah, you can't. What's the they can just say anything. But they can just be like, that stat's not accurate. No, yeah. I've read a different study. That's, done. that's the end done. of it. Done. 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 And then they just sound more certain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're not. The other thing is, that's all because it is. I was honestly trying to go into it with remembering stats and like what you were saying, I was very happy to have my mind. Because again, the whole thing is, 
when it comes to nuclear power, I wish that it was correct. I mm, wish that mm. what they were saying is true about it and it's this new miracle technology that's going to solve the world's problems. And that's what I used to think. And then I listened to a bunch of uh, you know whistleblower engineers and a bunch of physicists that were saying, no, this is all fucking fantasy world shit that they use to keep the nuclear industry going, which is used by the US Defence Force and, oh, sorry, um, Department of Defence. Same with India, same with China. All of them is just, it's all linked to the military industrial complex because they need it to treat certain equipment for nuclear subs and to make nuclear weapons. So they Fuck. just subsidise it at huge loss. Damn. There's there you everybody. have it, folks. That's you heard it here first. The nuclear power sector is corrupt. Well, I first for me. And dude, what a fucked sector to be corrupt. I mean, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, is there anything worse? Yeah, I mean, like, well, I don't know. <laughs> once again, like, the nuclear Simpsons. waste being disposed yeah. of by like criminals is is not fun to think about. The, the yeah. way that I'm always trying to explain it to people is everybody always says you just don't like nuclear power because of you've seen it in the Simpsons. And then I say always, well, yeah, I looked into it. I looked at all of these man-made disasters that they're always dismissing as like, that was man-made. Who the fuck do you think runs it now? Aliens? No, sorry. They didn't escape from Area 51 and get jobs as technicians. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, there's a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. But like the, the way that I'm always just trying to explain it really quickly is, no, it's exactly like it is in The Simpsons. Yeah. The, it's not a joke. Now when I go back and look at the jokes that they're going i'm just being like yeah that happened in 1972 in maine oh, okay that one happened in russia that one happened in japan yeah these things happen yeah like, well yeah. i think you've, you've, you've i think you've managed to convince most of your audience on that and to be honest you managed to convince me because i did fall for the whole bill gates thing it's the it, it has to be one of the critical components of the energy mix of the future and then you did actually convince me otherwise I really don't know why he's so into it, and he keeps saying that this is affordable is, and cheap. Well, it says he's been clean. petitioning for twenty years. But you know, you know what it is. Yeah. Like I'm more and more getting convinced of this. He's just invested a lot of money into it. The same <laughs> reason why he's saying like every third world country should switch over to fake meat instantly. Do you know what we're <laughs> finding? Okay, sorry. I and I might trigger a lot of people, and I should probably do way more research. On, trigger on this warning. Coming, but they're 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 coming to the <laughs> conclusion that. Uh, Fake meat, all it's of worse these than uh, vegan shit, uh, vegan uh, stuff, vegan like corn delicacy. That, that's, there's, well, a, there's, like, there's a lot of different ones. The there's stuff a, that is uh, is uh, sort of designed to taste like meat, not meat. That's yeah, the, so not veggie patties. It's called corn, but like actually, Q you you know, like Solberger stuff. They're they're finding that that has like horrible long term effects on human bodies. But I don't know if that yeah. should be a surprise, anyways. It That's true. I'm sure there's going to be another. So study. really, what you are eating is a patty of corn syrup. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It's, it's a fungus. genetically modified corn hey, well, syrup. What's wrong with that? It's a fungus, but if that's what you're talking about, there's a, fu there's a they, they use a fungus to derive like the protein substitute. But like, no, they don't use a fungus. I think they no, use, they do for one. They use they like a com uh, uh, whatever whatever makes meat taste like meat. That component is also present in vegetables. It's just not accentuated. So they like pull it out in a lab wearing white coats and stuff. And then they inject it into like most of the meat patty. So it resembles the same taste. And uh, I think that's how it works. But either way, they've, they've been very successful. It. it does taste like meat. I'll give them that. But um, apparently it's not that helpful. So Bill Gates has now come out and said, um, I think most of the third world needs to switch over from meat to that. And I think some of it might have to do with a lot of investments he's made into <laughs> that. It's also like not, you know, it still takes a why lot of energy. Give, why doesn't he just Warren Buffett it? He doesn't need to promote his investments. He has enough money to just invest in everything in the world and something in the world is going to do well. Is that what, why, is that what, that's Warren Buffett's... Uh, Diagnosis. That's well, Warren Buffett is actually really strategic because I think he's made six investments his entire life. And what, no, just he's like, made many, many more than that, yeah, but he's yeah. always got this idea of, I just research a stock for a year and then at the end I think, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can get behind that. Yeah. Well, okay, the other thing that everyone <laughs> seems to be asking because it is the pre-show, so I'm paying attention to the comments. Yeah, yeah. They're talking about my glasses. How come I'm not wearing glasses? Uh, and what's up with my new look? <laughs> 
This isn't Ali. This is a cab driver. <laughs> yeah, I am, I'm the new clicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, Ali actually did leave this show in disgust. <laughs> I'm wearing contact <laughs> And that's why he needs a Tesla because he's got fired as a cabbie and now he needs to get into the Uber game. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, oh, all right. Fuck. Perfect. So Say hello to... What, what's a good name? Satyajit. <laughs> Satyajit. It's Satyajit. Please don't call me Satyajit. So good. It just like you rewind to that discussion the whole time you're sitting there being like, I don't know, man. He had some good points. <laughs> <laughs> Strota Eddie once 87 says, um, just eat bug burgers. Do you think that's, Jesus that's the answer? Jesus Christ. No, thank you. Really? I, they've, been, they've been saying that. Crickets are pretty nice. <sighs> Cockroaches on the other of hand. Of course you'd say that. You eat fucking bones, chicken bones, like a dinosaur. Man. <laughs> dinosaur man. <laughs> <laughs> Dinosaur man. I don't know what that is. He does eat chicken uh, balls. <laughs> and no, like an animorph. No, what are those things? You're a character from Beast Wars. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember that Bumblebee, Buzz. Who, who, yeah, hey, Bumblebee and guys, also- Guys and girls, everybody, everyone on Twitch, uh, do you remember Beast Wars? Come at me. Come on, give us some comments. Do, like, are you too young for Beast Wars? They're probably too young. Do you remember Beast Wars? No, no. Well, it's not because I was younger. I feel like in, in, the, in the evolution of cartoons, it went Mickey Mouse, Beast Wars. It is very old. <laughs> it's so old. But <laughs> man, you remember Beast Wars? He doesn't. No, no, he I doesn't. Know, but I, I fucking... Everyone's enjoying it. Everyone it knows just, it. Yes. Know it. How Beast much Wars. better was it than Transformers? So Why much did they better. make Beast Wars movies? It was so much better. Yes, I'm 36 and I remember Beast Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone remember well, that? Well, okay, if you're 36, someone was a little too old to be watching Beast Wars. Really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <but laughs> I remember that means that when he was out, it was, was like 21, no, no. watching it be like, yes, I can't you eat that would be weird. But was- Sue Barnes is saying the spider chick was hot. True or false? True. Changed my mind. Very Changed true. Changed my mind. And it was completely animated. But what was the show? It was a show about... It was, it was just com- Transformers, <laughs> except instead of transforming into cars, they transformed into spiders and wasps that were the size of cars. Animals. So there were it was Transformers, but And they even had the same names, didn't they? Didn't they have like Decepticons and Optimates or whatever it was? Something like Automatons. that. It was just and, a ripoff. And the gorilla was Optimus Prime. Yeah, he was Optimus Prime. So and direct was ripoff? The, to, he was the T-Rex that was saying, Yes. Yeah, I love that guy. Optimus such Primal. A good bad guy. I love all it's of the Optimus Primal. Yeah, yeah. Optimus Primal. <laughs> I never got that as a kid. All right, and don't you think it went downhill like Pokemon? Waspinator. Sorry, sorry. So I'm just going to. Don't you think you. Pokemon was a golden first series where there was 150 Pokemon, and then they thought, ah, that's about all of them. Oh no, wait, we found this island where there's another 150 Pokemon. Uh, uh, Shark Mom. Uh, Stephen King novel man. <laughs> 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 that's when it started to slide yeah, where they just went yeah. uh, season three and there's another 150 you know dude it's the same as uh, Dragon Ball Z Dragon Ball Z GT and it that was sucked and it was the same with Beast Wars when f- for no reason at all they just traded them from looking like animals to making them look like I don't know like techno lighty up animals whoa I don't remember that no no well, you don't remember the techno lighty up one, but you don't remember the first one. And that's odd, Ali. <laughs> well, I said no. Strange. I don't know anything. <laughs> that's very this odd, This is a different Ali. language. I'm still um, focused on the guy who says that uh, I'm looking like the Pakistani prime minister. <laughs> is that what? Modi? It's not true, but like- it No, he's talking about the bit. Indian one. Because the guy- No, no, no. The Pakistani prime minister. The guy who has COVID now. I don't know. Oh, yeah. He's is. got COVID now. Do you want to hear something really funny? Go on. <laughs> this is a meme I saw, but it's actually, it's not even a meme, it's true. So vaccination rates in Pakistan are really low. It's the only country that is facing no supply <laughs> issues because no one is willing to take them because Respects. everyone has like really apprehension. So what happens is the prime minister gets a vaccination jab. Yeah. Two days later gets COVID. His wife also gets Shit. COVID. His wife has always worn a full niqab, like face covering and I saw this like guy on the streets who, who was asked are you going to take the vaccination jab and he was like of course no look at the prime minister's wife she was covering her face even before the pandemic this does not work 
Uh, yeah, those guys. Do you know what the slogan for tourism should be in Pakistan? Pakistan, the land that keeps giving. <laughs> no, no, no. How about this? Polio too. Still, still. No, they on, don't take on. polio vaccinations. Oh, this, right? this is better. This is better. Pakistan, the land that time forgot. Yeah, <laughs> and they did forget it. And they because, no like, that, I bet you the the Pakistani prime minister would be like, having COVID is a very inconvenient for me playing polo. <laughs> <laughs> cricket, let's be honest, right? <laughs> polo and cricket. Polo. Um, damn, that's wild. Yeah, it, it, it's it's really funny. Like, no one is going to take vaccinations. They're just... We're like and relax. Oh, guys, man. also, in the Twitch comments, I was thinking about this. There was an ad that Donald Trump put out when he was president, and it was of him coming in Chopper 1 or whatever it's called. <laughs> After getting COVID. Oh. And I think it was the most epic uh, ad I've ever oh, seen in my life. I know exactly what you're talking about. Have you about. seen it? It was basically an ad for the new Top Gun movie. Yeah. I have Wait, seen what it. was the ad? Like, I want that COVID. and I just want to, I want to get a screen so and just play that on rotation for the rest of this <laughs> pod's existence. <laughs> Boys, all right. It was unbelievable. It was so, it was he just He deserved to win the presidency from that. Yeah, it you know was how like every very news American. outlet has dropped uh, their ratings have plummeted. News outlet because of Trump, so have they? Yeah. Isn't it? And Fallen by 50, 60 percent. Like, insane! Like they are not being Shit. able. To. The guy how that ironic. they criticized most was their survival, but Trump's coming out with his own platform. Well, he's, he's doing his Trump TV. One. Yeah. No, he said he's not. Is he really? Yeah. And I think that's the greatest, the smartest. Trump TV. But they'll run out of content in like two and weeks. What? We were too. watching Trump's best mm. burns. I don't care that his climate policy sucks. Bring him back. <laughs> yeah. He was so good. He was funny. Uh, he was a non-stop comedian. He turned... Think about this. He turned the US presidential press room into a stand-up <laughs> show. <laughs> and, a, and a great one too <laughs> And it was the best one It was the best and one And it was nothing but improv Yeah Yeah Total improv Total improv He should have his own special and Man Him paying out Cunts from CNN <laughs> It is gold <laughs> it's, it's art Terrible show you, Your organization Is frankly disgusting It's terrible <laughs> And your ratings You're a horrible person And your, your you ratings really Are shocking Yeah, yeah. Is this, Give it again Again What was that like yeah, it, I, it's just my like, mic's like not working over and over. So that. many insults in one thing of him just being like, "What, what, what do you say about the British? What do you say?" No, okay, the the one that wasn't that incredible. He's just sitting there, and it's mad. He just comes and leans into the mic and just says some wise crack comment, and then leans out and then comes back in while they're speaking. It makes it so <laughs> much better. So he'd just be sitting there saying, "They're not uh, like he'd be like, what, what do you say about your comments about uh, the caravan being an invasion?" He's like, "It is an invasion." That's my opinion. You can have a different one, and that's fine. That's America. I stand by it. But it is an invasion. And then they'd say, it's not an invasion. It's a bunch of immigrants coming up from uh, Central America. Then he'd lean in and be like, oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and then finish, he'd just be like, all right, all right. Shush, shush, shush. You're a terrible person. <laughs> you work for a terrible organization. <laughs> you really should be ashamed of yourself, if you're to be honest. If I were you, I'd feel very bad about myself. Uh, <laughs> sad. Dude. So sad. I, uh, I, I do miss him. I do I miss, miss him. him so much. Everyone yeah. misses him. Everyone mi The ratings prove it. The ratings prove it. And with all those comedians during Trump that were constantly paying him out, no one had the balls to admit that he was funnier than every each and every Owned one of them. him. Owned them. He and was better at their job. I swear, mm -hmm. the ideal world would be, because it is just a figurehead position anyway, the ideal world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I like That's Miss Love's thought of Biden is exactly who you imagine when you close your eyes and think of a US president. Yeah. And go he on. just looks like someone who was in the West Wing. And tell him what I thought, what I said. What? President for life. He should be president for life purely on his aesthetic. <laughs> like, he'll do good. He, he, he's... He's, he's he is exactly the way, you know I mean? who the president of the United States should be. Yeah, it's down to the hair. His policies, even, even like, have you seen his Air Force One clip where he falls three it. times? He's, he three, can't get up the stairs. Three times, like he nearly falls down them. It's bad. It's bad. It's it's, it's, so, it's sad, dude. But you know what it is? It's the it's us. 
It's people like us that constantly criticize him for being like old. Well, he's like a hundred. Well, right? We don't uh, look. Uh, we don't criticize him for being old. We criticize him for being senile. Which is yeah, and no, and we like that. <laughs> but it, the thing is, like, he he falls over, right? But he is so conscious of the fact that he's fallen over, and all the cameras are at him. And you know, he's recounting how everyone thinks he shouldn't be here because he's too old, so that he stumbles again. And he gets even more impression than he stumbles the it's third worse time. worse and worse. It's like, bad. like he, he's doing the thing of just being like, just a quick recovery. No one showed that. Ah! And it's just worse. And it's just like, still got time. And it gets worse. It's just like, just just go limp and then breathe. And, and then it, work wasn't, your way. it wasn't even funny. Like, usually when people fall, particularly old people fall, there is like a little gene in you that just ends up laughing. It's Australia's out loud. funniest home videos content. Yeah, but for some reason, that was just. <laughs> Silly's trying to walk into Air Force One. <laughs> yeah, that's sad. Do you know what was <laughs> infinitely funnier? Trump slowly walking up the fucking stage with like toilet paper sticks. That <laughs> was gold, Ooh. dude. With toilet paper. Bill Maher's point was just like, you have no friends. Nobody told you that. No one <laughs> likes you. And also- New rule, get some friends. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the, the walk from like the toilet all the way through the tarmac, getting on the plane would have been long so enough. So long. For someone it's so funny. I, I feel like I feel like I have like a Trump hangover, but in a good way, where it's like it's only catching up to me. You know when something traumatic or intense happens in your life, usually it takes like sometimes well, it depends what it is, but sometimes it takes a week, sometimes it takes a year for it to actually sing. It just goes boom, and you're like, it just you just contemplate, you're like, holy shit, that actually happened. I'm it just It was like Yilmaz becoming prime minister. If he did? Well, it was I thought that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, if Yulmaz became prime oh, minister, okay. what I'm always saying to <laughs> I was just everybody like, that's no, saying, that didn't was happen. Yulmaz real? Yeah. And then they say, I have a Yulmaz at my school. I say, you hold on to him. You hold on to him for dear life. And you take notes. Because <laughs> then you'll day, be rich and famous. <clears throat> you can put dumb things they say on a shirt and become a millionaire. But <laughs> they, they're so annoying that you try and stop spending time with them. And then when they go away, you think, no, that was a blessing. And I turned that blessing away, threw it out the window. <sighs> I think that's what happened to Trump. After a while, I was like, yeah, yeah, he does something funny every day, but I do have to get on with the rest of my life. Yeah, that's true. And so the only people that were sitting there watching him were people like my dad going, he's so horrible. No, I was- And you know who's brave? Hillary Clinton. <laughs> but I was always watching him. Like. I he was, he was, I was legitimately enjoying the comedy. Do you mm. think that he got a little less funny towards the end? Not when he was pressured into it. Cause he was, he was getting tired. His character is, he's the only guy whose character was actually real. Like he was that guy. Yeah. Usually when, when mm. there's a personality that that's fucking ridiculous, it's usually an act. Mm. But with him, it wasn't. So he would be forced into being more presidential sometimes. And yes, he would get a little, you know, boring. But then as soon as someone pissed him off, he'd be back into like being the... No, but even when we were watching press conferences of him towards the end, I think it's just, it's too much pressure being the most hated person in Washington. In the world. Knowing that everyone despised you. After a while, you start getting prickly. Mm. In the beginning when he was... The primaries... The Republican primaries was his golden era because what, there wasn't running? that. You know why? Because nothing, the press wasn't was really yeah. attacking him yeah. then. They saw him as a spectacle, so they'd just be relaying his best burns. Not but then only. after that, all of his best burns started to just get things like, oh, my God, this is very unpresidential. This is very troubling. Mm. And it, it has its toll. But you know mm. what? I not, not a lot of people uh, think of it. But go back to 2016, early 2016, during the primaries – the liberal media kind of supported him because they yeah. thought well, if yeah. he if he if he becomes a nominee, it's going to be an easy Take win more. for uh, right. Uh, so right. they kind of induced it a little bit too. It wasn't when the exact opposite is true. Anyone else except Donald Trump? <laughs> Can I just read something? Yeah. Can I just read? We had our own Yilmaz bloke specifically bragged that he could lift three doors. Not four. <laughs> not two. Three. No more. No less. Clack. <laughs> Black mate. That's funny, dude. Black mate. Um, but yeah, look. Yeah, I, I, it is. It, it just feels bizarre. <laughs> it just. 
three. It does feel strange thinking about it now, but but like, I think it was. I think it had to happen. I'm. I think. I think it. it you know. There's always YouTube. You can always rewatch his best burns. Oh, on I YouTube. do. We but do. Now you just get sad because yeah, you're like, you I could have had another four years of this season. Come on, you were the one that was like very upset about the world burning down. If Trump, but this said. is what I'm saying. Wouldn't the ideal world be where he is just president, kind of like the Queen is the Queen of England, and he doesn't really have any power, <laughs> but he just has that. Don't you think they should just anoint and, and write into the Constitution that Trump is, I don't know, Prime what, Minister of the US? What, a yeah. new, uh, what are they called? Amendment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't ah. Governor King. Uh, what, is that a thing? Governor. No, but it should be Governor Trump. King Trump. Because if you make him Governor General, he's not going to be too happy. But if you make him Governor King... Well, maybe just king. Just king. Just yeah. king. king of America. A monarchy in America. That's never going to happen. Well, it pretty much is. What are you talking the, about? The Trump family would be the closest thing to a monarchy. Yes, but they would never... Well, you're right, actually, in a weird kind of... Like, he's already way. doing it now. He's already getting his family members to run for office. Yeah, he wants to... I think he's really? going to run 2023, too. 24. 24. I mean, look, don't you think... And everybody was loving it as well. But the other day, uh, Megan Markle, or whatever the fuck her name is, <laughs> she... You uh, shouldn't know. She said that she was running for president. Yes. And then Trump was saying, I would love her to run for president and I would love to run against her. Uh, and that would be a total decimation. Trump but would <laughs> slay. But, but don't, I don't think she could. But don't the, the fact that she wants to be the president should expose her old ulterior motives a little bit. I hate I think, that lady. I think her opening her mouth exposes her ulterior motives. Yeah. <laughs> She's she seems like a she seems like a very very dangerous woman. But don't you think the age of like celebrities nah, running just annoying, huh? Don't you think the age of celebrities running is? It, don't you think that we've had peak of that? No one's going to beat Trump, and no one should try. Neil like, is of the opinion that Kanye is going to have a really good go at it. I fucking hope not, man. I really hope not. I don't, I, well, like, and I don't, you know what? Scott Adams, who I don't want uh, Oprah predicted to do Trump either. winning. Yeah. Is that the Doug Ryder? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Doug. Dilbert. Dilbert, Dilbert. My bad, my bad. But Doug. I'm glad that you reminded me of Doug. <laughs> Sorry. Everyone's third favorite Saturday cartoon. What the hell's Dilbert? You know Dilbert? No. The guy with the glasses, no mouth. 50s? Has, Is that when he was written? Pretty much looks like a cartoon character of Scott Morrison if he was really simplified. Was that like in the funnies, in the funny papers? Like at yeah, the end it was the, in the funnies. Yeah, okay. It was an institution. So Doug was much better, basically. Doug was much okay. better. But Doug's better than everything, I love really. Doug. Did you watch Doug? I didn't watch any of this. In fact, oh. here's a question. Are you Doug? <laughs> While you guys and are you Skeeter? While you guys were watching and that. And am I Bay Bay? <laughs> I, I, I don't even remember. Like... I need to rehash. Uh, look, my let's go on a break. Baby. Uh, the time I don't for... want to talk about Doug. Yeah, me too. Maybe... Actually, do it now because let's not talk about him, the main one. <laughs> Another... Doug was mad. BRB. Yeah, his skin, his mate's skin was blue, right? Or his skin yeah. was blue. And also this. Do you remember this? Hey, buddy. Honk, honk. Vaguely. And every time either his... he or the press, professor came along, there was that music going. I really have to revisit it. I remember his dog. Do you remember the theme song? Wasn't it just literally one of those ones kind of like Hey Arnold where it was just like... It was even simpler. Doug. Hey, what is, simpler, simpler. But what it is, was very 90s. What does Give this it to joke me. mean? They're saying Ali likes Andy Cap, lol. Don't know. Oh, okay. I thought this was a reference to the thing. Where? Marilini, Ali likes Andy Cap. I don't you know. You know what I'm starting to feel like now in this podcast? <laughs> the, we're oh, watching you know Merrick and Rosso when they were just on <laughs> top 40 radio for a bit too long? <laughs> that's what I'm starting to feel about the internet. Well, that's Twitch. Too that is this shit. I, I'm. And you, we are. I, I should be in Tony Robbins seminars. I shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> it, hey, like, now, now, someone like, might actually leave now for real. Now, like people do wait, say. Wait, no, the fact is, like on the net, we're sitting there saying, "Remember, Doug? Those yeah. were the days." Well, uh, look, we'll be back from the pre-show. Thank you. So uh, fuck. West. Welcome to the Friendly Geordies podcast. This is an exclusive episode since the Miss Gate. <laughs> yeah, look, I was going to walk and then I was like, you know what? You know, being a 
working as a as a, as a car cleaner in a, in one of those like ass end of a BWS probably isn't as good as working for one of the biggest pods in the world. <laughs> one of the biggest. I mean, pods in in the, in the country. Well, yeah, that actually is true. Let's be honest. That's all I could do now. My if I got booted from this. If you, if I was like, you, you get f- one of those jobs that only sex offenders can get. Yeah, <laughs> sex offender. You know, job. fun fact. This yeah, is that's true. really true. Like, I, I, I got to say for a second, thanks so much, guys. After you've been cancelled, this is the only way to create revenue. It was like what Slavoj Žižek was saying, where they were going, "You're like one of the most popular intellectuals of your generation," and he was saying, "Yeah, but not amongst academics, you know. If I didn't have YouTube, then I'd be homeless." And Jesus. he already looks homeless anyway. He's halfway there. Yeah. I looked up a list of 50, like 50 most prominent philosophers. So not even intellectuals. A specific field of philosophers. Slavoj Žižek was number 50. And the funny what? thing is the top 49, besides like Chomsky, you don't even know who they are. <laughs> Doesn't that mean they're probably legit? No, they are. I don't like, think it I, is. Look, really? To be fair, I knew at least four or five of them, but I know I'm the only one who knows them. I tell you what. I'm starting to realize that all institutions suffer from whatever the group think is of the day. And I'm putting it all together. It's not just the press. It is academia. It is the arts. It's always been like that, that if you are an artist that bucks the trend or if you're an academic that bucks the trend, you're going to be Slavoj Žižek, but the difference was YouTube did not exist in Mm. Da Vinci's day. Mm. Well, well, Da Vinci's not a good example because he was actually loved by the elites. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Right? Also, let's not jump the gun. You never know. It might have been around then. We weren't there. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. But you've, He's you've, an old man. <laughs> but you know, like, uh, you've, you've heard Chomsky's take on this, right? If you think about it, a lot of these people who we think are great now weren't really considered to be great when they were living and doing their work. Right. Chomsky has this thing, well, there was always people there. there. And back in the day, there were intellectuals that were for that advocated for the state, and then there were intellectuals that were against the state. We had different names for them. The ones that were against the state, we now call them false prophets. And the one, the ones that were with the state, we called them false prophets. And the ones that were against, they're known as prophets now. Mm. So basically the point huh. is, yes, while you're alive, life is shit, everyone shuns you, but 200 years later, people recognize that you were the one that was actually smart because now history is... Basically, come to a point where their predictions have come true. Is that what they're saying this of today? Is way too Joe Rogany, but don't you think that YouTube has broken down that barrier? So it's not <laughs> two hundred years anymore. It's like two hundred fucking seconds, depending on your internet upload. Damn, this pod has got a lot better. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look at it. One of the guys here is wearing a Deus Ex shirt. <laughs> it's the Joe Rogan podcast. And this? Another guy, look at that fucking shirt. <laughs> it's a standard Kmart Hawaiian shirt. Don't you think that's the hand signal for this shirt? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I used to work on American Chopper until it was cancelled. <laughs> what's your favorite holiday? I used hol- to love that shirt. Yeah, what's your favorite holiday destination? Ooh, look, it's a top up between Malaysia and Bali, but. I got to say Malaysia. <laughs> yes. Good um, choice. Good choice. Yeah. Uh, good surf. Some fucking scary jaguars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shit, Get over accent. animals. I know. I, I, I will pay that. Every time the Joe Rogan person is like, I'm going to show you a, a fucking video of a hyena killing a zebra. I'm like, are we 10 years old here? Like, are they are interesting. National Geographic. They I don't are need interesting. To- Ugh, and so look, let's, I know we've just said get over animals, but this is our first segment for the today. <laughs> the flarge have caused several animals. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hypocrite over here. <laughs> get over animals. No, Don't make no, animals. Look, the thing is, I'm a fan of animals. I'm just not that big of a fan of predatory animals. There's something yeah. about it that's just kind of dumb. bro It's bro It's too bro It's like, unless an animal has fucking huge claws, it sucks. And it's actually, a fucking beater. And actually, it's actually <laughs> nativist just because there's nativist. only marsupials nativist. over here. You're yeah. being nativist. That's racist. What about like all those Bengal tigers? You don't care about them? <laughs> no. I actually... Look, how just, about this? Okay. Look they're, they're evil. Who, well, I, and don't you think... They can that, be very Don't you evil. think that like, you know... Do you like the uh, Lithgow Puma? I love the Lithgow Puma. Thank you. But it's a fucking endangered species. I'm pretty sure it's just a black cat. <laughs> but anyway, 
Let's not say things that we don't know anything about. That's true as why well. Do, yeah, why do Australians <laughs> hate predators so much? I think we had one and we killed it, the tiger, the Tasmanian tiger, whatever it was. That, well, that's we not straight the predators. up killed him in like three years. Would you say a dingo Every is a predator? And then Ali has a conversation with me where I realized, damn, this guy, an immigrant. <laughs> I know what's coming next. The Tasmanian tiger. First of all, he mistook it for a Tasmanian devil, which is only excusable when you're six years old. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah, the only predator? But I predator? suppose you are six years old. That's about as long yeah, as Yeah, that's been. how long I've been. Well, slightly more than that. I think I'm a little slow. I've been here for like close to 10 years now. But, uh, but you, Jordan was like, um, I kept mistaking the Tasmanian tiger for devil. And Jordan was saying, no, no, there's still a few. I was like, man, your conspiracy theory is getting out of control. <laughs> oh They're God. dead. He's like, no, 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 there's a few in New South Wales. I was like, this <laughs> but guy by. He was talking about the yeah, Lithgow Puma. <laughs> no, I was talking about Tasmania Tiger. You reckon they're still around? Yeah. Well, I don't well, know. I, don't know. I just read one book from one guy that used to work in the national parks in Tasmania, and he was saying that... That'd be amazing if they are, but yeah. He was. He's putting towards the argument that most scientists give about aliens that the universe is too big. We don't know so probably... Okay. That's pretty much the thesis of his book. I don't know why I needed to write an entire book to say that. It was just a sentence. Yeah. But <laughs> he's saying that the terrain in Tasmania is so rugged that human beings find it really hard to traverse to go into the deep nether That's regions true. of Tasmania. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of hectares. Yeah. So we can't discount this when people say, I saw a Tasmanian tiger. Yeah. I'm sure most of the, my nan reckons she saw one. Damn. And I think it's just the same thing. It's like, yeah, but you do realize they do look a lot like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and she was saying, no, it was a Tasmania tiger because it had a big head. Yeah. Or it's a staffy. <laughs> <laughs> Did it have the stripes? They have stripes, Tasmanian tigers. Yeah, they do. But so do staffies. Dude, that's true. So I mean, they have thing. been, they have been, for, even though there's like mass extinction. And I know all about this because I had a little excursion to the Australian Museum. Tune into our <gasps> up late pod. Oh yeah, you got to you tune into our up late to uh, hear all about it. Actually, no, you like really it. need to sign up to our up late pod because if you are craving new, oh chimpanzee, that look at that, he's written it down from the Ricky Gervais podcast. We've just realised. I, I don't know why it took us this long. Basically, uh, Carl Pilkington. Yeah, his thoughts, him writing a diary of his day to day experiences. I don't think Ali and I have ever laughed that hard. <laughs> well, absolutely. Love. Because yeah, his observations, we'll give him a I, little teaser. The observations <laughs> are insanely funny. Like the one of the top observations from Miss Love going to Fairfield. Don't say the raciest one. Again, no, 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 not the raciest one, but it was, uh, Miss Love just written this in block points on his notes. The Ibises in this suburb have learned to fly. <laughs> no, that, that's too, that's too developed. It was just Ibises here have learned to fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it, it, it's kind of the ramblings of a madman. It, it, it is pretty funny. But but look, just so to I can't wait. I thought that it would be really good if you went and tried to educate yourself and you well, just I put did. down the... Well, I did. I did. And again... Did you educate yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm, like, again, we're not going to delve into it because you want you want the goods, sign up on Patreon. It's totally worth it. But trust me, you do want the goods. Uh, but just to, just, uh, uh, you know... This is a little bit of what I've I've read in the news and a little bit of uh, what I learned there. Uh, species species um, extinction is like progressing at a rapid rate. Like they think that like a third of the world's world species will be gone in thirty years. Mm. Uh, terrifying stuff. But well, Gary Awesome reckons it's full of shit. Yeah, of course he does. But. Uh, <laughs> Well, there'll be new ones. What, what's you his trust, so cunt? What's his sources? Saw it on Sky News, dickhead. Uh, Didn't even see it on Sky News. I just pissed off at the environment for some reason. Yeah, so it's so, like the worst enemy to have. But <laughs> but on, on, on but uh, contrary, uh, you know, as well as that point, I was I was saying that like a lot of species are still being discovered now. There's a huge slew of dispe- uh, species globally that like. Some that were thought to be extinct that have come back, quite a few actually that have that that, that they've reemerged. I can't think so of. So Gary Orson isn't wrong. Come well, on. no, no, no. They're, you can have. They're not mutually exclusive. <laughs> that was like, his argument. Well, no, but there's two. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's not a huge drop in numbers on uh, other species. But 
My point being is like, it's cool to see that it's just like, ah, the ring-tailed dodo has come back to Mississippi. And it's like, that's cool. So all I'm saying is like Tasmanian tigers. I'm with Jordan. You never know. Yeah. I'm with, I'm, well, it's seriously though. It's like, if there is a large, sl, uh, sl, you know, massive area of terrain that is unexplorable, there's no reason for people to go there. It's not insane. It's to not be insane. Like, and also, and it's happening. It's Tasmanian happening every tigers year. Tigers apparently were a very shy creature. And if you're in the middle of the bush, this is what he was saying. Uh, obviously, if you live in the wilderness, animals are aware of you kilometers before you could be aware of them. His main argument is that most of the time, if an, an, if an animal allows you to see it, it's because it's kind of just assessed that you're not a threat. Yeah. Very rarely will an animal just be so stupid that it won't get that you're there to kill it or whatever. And it can even pick up on your emotion. Mm. Yeah. But you, but you and know, don't you think that also the if, if there was just a mass wiping out of Tasmania tigers, the ones that would have survived would have been the ones that were naturally shy. So you are breeding shy Tasmanian tigers if they still exist. Well, mm. that I second, you know, because when we went to Pakistan, do you remember how, like, every bird, every animal over there was just shit scared of humans? Mm. They, they've been, because humans are horrible, I think, in that <laughs> part of the world, in terms of treating animals. Yeah, they like, are, yeah. Well, you know, globally, you, really. Home, cancel yes. me if you must, but it is fucking true. They, but in terms of their respect to Allah... They are second to none. That is, except for... Uh, the yeah, right except thing except to Afghanistan. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and all the other stands. Yeah. yeah. Look, the more north you go, the more respectful it is. <laughs> and, and how good is this? The only... Actually, this, this takes us to the first thing. The, the floods are causing spiders to die and flee in droves. And spiders are the only kind of animal that Muslims cannot fuck with. Why? Why? Because they are holy. What? Because like, oh, do you, do, you want, do you want to know the actual story? So Please. Muhammad, when he was like, he was being persecuted in Mecca. So he had to go to a different city in Medina. And so these people were after him. This is what the text says. Like, so the people were after him, okay. chasing him to try to kill him. And he hides into a cave. Um, and in order and God. <laughs> so it's better then, than the Bible. God then sends <laughs> a spider that makes a really quick web. Uh, on the entrance of the cave. <laughs> so these guys on horses, they look at the cave like, oh, could he be inside? And the other guys, no, look at the spider web. It's clearly no one's gotten in there. All right, let's keep going. And since then, spiders are holy that you should not kill them. Whoa, that's some far-fetched shit. That's an episode of the 70s Spider-Man. Like that happens in an episode of Spider-Man in yeah. the cartoon. It's yeah, not far-fetched, you're triggering me. You're gonna- Sorry. It's going to be very surprising from someone who thinks that the Tasmanian might, tiger might still be exist, but we don't know. We, we weren't there. Yeah, true, <laughs> yeah, we, true, true. So coming back to the point, I am very personally offended about these spiders dying. So what can we do? What can we do? What can we well, do? And what spiders? Order? Tell us about it. Because I don't, I don't, I don't know, know if Red you want to talk legs. about the donation or not. Nah? Yeah, of course. That's what I want everybody to be donating to Animal Rescue Collective. I just slapped down 10 grand. This man just gave 10 grand for that. <laughs> Thank and you. I thought about giving money, but haven't yet. You know what? <laughs> I don't think anyone's expecting you to. <laughs> hey. But I do expect him to be thinking about it and then three years later. <laughs> I'll do it. Just putting it on uh, Animal Rescue Collective's GoFundMe and then putting in the, uh, in the comments for the floods. Yeah. The floods. And at that point, it'll just be fires again. Like, yeah. it'll be fires, it'll yeah. be fires. And yeah. I'm just like, ah. And I'm just like, no, no, no. This is for flood, mate. Just put that away for the next year. Yeah. And then you're sitting there mulling on it again, being like, <laughs> hmm, should I give money to this while you're watching Cher melt in it? <laughs> while watching what? Cher melting in the flood. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in. Ah! Hmm. Yeah. Should I be helping Cher? <laughs> no, let's listen to that song again. <laughs> What do you? What, what I'll mainly remember is the music. <laughs> what, what do you think of the opinion, Jordan, that these floods are for a reason, and by saving these species, we're interfering with the natural order of life? <laughs> Have you seen that argument? No, what? I think I, I thought I just made it up, but I guess it's out there. <laughs> All right, that should say everything you need to know about it, Ali. Thinking of a joke mm. is some people's honest opinion. 
<laughs> is that Gary Does Awesome? Else need to be said. Is that Gary Awesome's opinion? No, his opinion's even dumber. What is his? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The lefties just keep talking about koalas, but have you ever noticed they don't give a shit about the millions of cockroaches that died in the bushfires? I don't think many did. Do you think they they're faster than the fire? No, I mean like cockroaches, as in native ones. Well, that and German, whatever. I don't think there's. <laughs> I don't know. No I don't think there's native. Right, no one gives a shit about cockroaches. We don't even know if they're native or not. But they're not. Like cockroaches are usually. Uh, the cockroaches get in houses. Only live in houses. They don't live outside. Really? Yeah. Wait, are we no, going? they do. No, they don't. Is this still? Like- I walk down to Bronte and I see. Thousands. It's oh, that's so a, scary. That's you go there at twelve variety. at night. That's no, different... it's the German Wait, ones. Really? Confused. And they're fucking thousands. Oh. Of them. Are we still talking about hipsters as cockroaches? A euphemism, or these are actual cockroaches now? <laughs> <laughs> well, they do only live in houses. They do fuck a lot, and they live in um, haunting, thousands. Okay, but like, and they do but, live but, in but the bushfires. Okay, there's no fucking German cockroaches in the bush. Hang on, so are you saying that not a single German cockroach died in the bushfires? Yes, <laughs> I'm putting it down right now. But some houses burned. Okay, fine. The ones in the Excluding houses. Excluding the ones from houses, you're saying no German. Yes. <laughs> it's a huge call. I'm calling it. <laughs> what? How you, they you don't, can't do this. They don't live in the bush. They don't. With German cockroaches specifically. Yes. All right, the audience is going to have to wait. Yeah, wait in. There's like, there's I don't even know where my phone went. Right here. There's native, uh, there's native, probably variety of native bugs and stuff that are similar. But like how Gary Olson's been like, no one cares about cockroaches. It's like, look, unless you're talking about like those house cockroaches, they didn't die there. If you're talking about like centipedes and millipedes and all those kinds of- There's bush roaches. There's Aussie sure. bush roaches. I'm not talking about them. Vigor they died. Vigor says Australia has native roaches. I'm not talking we, about we the native. That, I'm not Vigor. talking- Give us some- I'm not talking Tony about the native for PM ones. 2021 says Miss Love has it right. Yay. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 Damn, you learned a lot at the Australian <laughs> Natural History <laughs> Museum. I really did. Uh, but, 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 my, but, but to go back to- yeah, you can keep reading them, but like to go, damn, to go back to Gary Olson's point, it's like no one cares about the roaches. It's like they definitely care about the native roaches. So that's bullshit, Mr. Awesome. <laughs> but how do you differentiate between native or actually someone just read that and I read it out loud. Apparently they're saying broken hair says the native roaches fly. But so do Germans. Not all of them. The Luftlasse is the greatest. But they're not like ibises, Miss Love. You know? <laughs> yes, they are, actually. Just fly from region They are, region. actually. They are fuck. Well, ibises, obviously, you know, found out can all fly, but some don't fly. Some cockroaches don't fly. Well, here, here's another yeah, some fun some breeds fact. of them, but yeah. if you're talking about those German cockroaches that you see in houses, those motherfuckers fly. No, I not all of them. Only in Bondi. Bondi. And every second night, one flies into my eye while I'm sleeping. Oh, so that's a native one. Suck. No, 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 it's not. But that's because- for some- I'm glad it's not a native Dude, one. there are none of them on the North Shore. It- the first time I saw a flying cockroach was in the inner west and I screamed like a small school girl. And they're in As Bondi. And they're in Bondi. They're not, they're not, uh, there's a lot of them that don't do that. Well, what are the ones in North Shore? They don't fly. Are they big? Not really. Oh, they're kind of so those little teeny silver fish. No, so those like, are the German ones, probably. Yeah, the one, They're not tiny, but they don't fly. Mind they balance fly. is another fact about then one female German cockroach can produce up to twenty thousand young annually. Yeah, I figured that out. I and live with them. Dongi is is making it clear that uh, our conversation is very roachist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> thank you for your. Input. It'll come to that soon, I tell you. Uh, but uh, well, yeah, but back to the point. Gary Orson. No, no, I'm still sucked. at that point. Can you actually debunk um, uh, Gary Orson's argument? Because I'd be falling flat. I'd be like, well, yeah. I mean, he's right. Certain certain animals get a lot of preference compared to Only others. Only from dumb people. A lot dude. of preference. Only like, I mean, the people. fact that everyone is. Let's oh, everyone cares about the quality. It's the same. No, it's, but this is the whole thing. Uh, anyone that says that, I say, if you're preserving the habitats that koalas live in, you are stopping. The majority of spatial extinction. A lot of it is happening in gum forests. Very little of it's happening in rainforests because there's very little rainforest in Australia. The predominant forest here isn't Old necessarily growth. koala territory, um, but like those habitats, a lot because koalas are in it, are very biodiverse rich. And so if you protect koalas, you protect... In- and also the other thing is they're integral to those ecosystems. 
their shit recycles because the whole thing in, in, in those areas, there's very little nutrients. Mm. That's why gum leaves are fr- thriving. So, I don't know. That's my argument. No, it's no it's dude, it's no. It's, it's really interesting that you have a one-point agenda. Save koalas. Because no, you want to no, make no. it as simple as possible. You don't Bio- want to be sitting there. And, oh, well, sometimes I do say there's a thousand species going extinct. You go through all of those Dude, ones. But biodiversity is the key. Bio- you do have to care about the cockroaches. You have to care about all of it. So, hence, donate for floods. Uh, go on Friendly Geordie's Facebook page, and there's a link over there. But before please you do, do that, please become a patron. <laughs> don't do- Because that money is going to go to the animals, but the patron money comes going to, to Ali's these car. animals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ali's car. Hey, it's eco-friendly. Whatever. <laughs> hey, yeah, and I will save many roaches by buying a hybrid. But, can no, I- but honestly, I will say this. I don't say it enough. Very proud of you guys because your donation saved millions of animals in the bushfires from starving so that they can drown now. <laughs> Fuck. Well, you got to choose what you want. The post-apocalyptic era is scary. Fuck. It's either mass yeah. bushfires or drowning. It's really intense. It's horrible. Like every year it becomes like, this is a hundred year event. I was like, bitch, it happened last year. I know. Yeah. And, I but know. it's scary. And dude, it's gone to a point where like, even it's gonna my get- older brother was like, who, look, he doesn't deny climate change, but he's everything. But he's one but of those that. people that thinks, I think that a potato is as sentient as a tiger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, even, but even he Elrond was saying, Hubbard vibes. Even he was saying yesterday that, this, this flood is pretty crazy and I think there will be more next year and the year after I was like why why do you think that I think climate change might be real man like it's happening I think shit <laughs> finally he the came voice we all needed on this <laughs> he came to the conclusion <laughs> he came to the conclusion that I came to a few years ago unbelievable <laughs> uh, alright look uh, before uh, one more thing related to this um, <laughs> Jordan you do not know this because I know for the last five days you've been Hanging out with Tony Robbins. Mr. Robbins. Which, I don't know how I'm awake at the moment. Which, which is insane. Yeah. Like the fact. I just got to say this. This is how much I love Tony Robbins. I did not know that this seminar was in EST. I thought it was EAST. <laughs> Can I also in. say classic Geordies? Yeah. Classic <sighs> Jimmy's. Like so good. It's like, I did what? Oh, no. Now we got to go on a cruise to Antarctica and it goes back to the other the other North Pole and that's it all over again. Yeah, I know. That's you, dude. And I, that's me it, too. Yeah. I'm, it wouldn't I'm, be surprising if either of us uh, woke up and there was all these like drag queens around us saying like, pack her up, Ned. Yes. You're part of an Antarctic drag show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And that would have, that would be what would happen to you, and frankly, me. It as did. Well. It probably did. Yeah. But okay, probably so this is, did. This, this is this is the uh, news. This is what's happening. Well, you're aware that it's been raining for fucking four days, but uh, the barely. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I really have just. I really have to say this. This is how much I love Tony Robbins. I will spend as much on uh, protecting animals from going extinct on that man, even though he's worth billions of dollars. Uh, to be jet lagged in my own house. Jesus. I didn't know that was possible, but I am waking up at two a.m. in the morning and then uh, confronted with a giant man that <laughs> informs us on the first day, guys. I might have to take some breaks because in my thirties I talk so much that my esophagus wore out. The only reason I'm able to talk is because my voice box infused with another organ. So you're just hearing it rattle. <laughs> And then he just proceeds for the next 16 hours. So is that as a 62-year-old man saying, everybody get up. You're not doing enough aerobics. The only way to learn about taxes is by doing a lot of star jumps. He's such a king. He's the greatest man of all time. That's actually funny. But look, I, I, I need... Okay, th- this I is can't get over it. I didn't I know. know it was possible to be jet-lagged in your own house. <laughs> That's oh, so okay. satisfying, dude. This is... Okay, it's, <laughs> dude, you know what's even more satisfying? This legitimately happened. Sorry, we're going to have to deviate because... So when we were in Canberra... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for, uh, for, for some reason, for all of the venues... Did you meet any fans, by the way? 
Yeah, yeah, we met cool. fans, but like uh, because of COVID, we couldn't meet all of them. But right, right. Th- this is the <laughs> there were no bathrooms near the green room. Every for some reason, before Jordan has to go on the show, he ne- he pisses like it's insane. So we would oh, end no. up having to Bottle. fill up bottles, right? But no. This is the thing. He, at one point, he's got a. Sh- he has the show is starting in like four minutes, right? He's like, I gotta pee, I gotta pee. We finished all the bottles because he's uh, like literally filled all of the available bottles. There's a Red Bull can. Oh, he's no. fucking pissing in the Red Bull no. can. He either misses or it overflows, and it's all over the front, all over his pants and shirt. So he's literally covered <laughs> with piss <laughs> and my shirt and my shirt. And I had to go on in four minutes. And Ali was oh. laughing at me while I'm sitting there going, fuck, fuck. No. <laughs> Not only that, he gets so nervous that he takes fucking hand sanitizer and he starts spraying all over the place. Oh He's my like, yeah, this God. Is gonna beat the it's piss. funnier than the show. The backstage is funnier than the show. It was. And so he's getting nervous. And I was like, look, no one needs to know the stain is piss. They'll just assume that you drop water on it or something. Did you tell him? You better have told him it was piss. No. <laughs> why would I tell them that? Because that's going to be the funniest and joke in the act. Why would you tell them that lie? <laughs> because I think- Dude, amazing. And <laughs> you you suck for not fucking opening with that. Guess what I'm covered in? It would have been the funniest but show the in the is, act. It happened over Call and over again. Call yourself a fucking comedian. I got to say, miss, I wish I was as punk as you. <laughs> that's insane. Just walking on stage, like, just like you to know, I pissed on myself. <laughs> Dude, if that- I'm not Gigi Allen. <laughs> yeah, clearly. And, I, and I'm really un, un, unimpressed. I'm impressed you pissed on yourself. But I did in the exact same venues that he would. Fuck, they are scummy. Hey. RSLs. <laughs> not even. Just a lot of, you would love them. A, a bunch of, the only ways to describe them is rock dent. <laughs> All these guitars flying in the air. I don't know. Look, I just the- feel like if, if Slash moved there, uh, walked in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gravity would stop working for him for a second and be like, mm, float up to the ceiling and grab one. <laughs> I'll extend an olive branch. The fact that you know who Gigi Allen is overrides the fact that you didn't open with a piss joke. Uh, and fine. also, look, with super, <laughs> Superintendent Almond says, Jordan, you should know we expect that off you. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so Dude, it's a, I, that's just a plus. I wouldn't have been like, oh, Roach, what the hell? I would have just been like, that's why this cat's the, the, the comedian of our generation. Seriously. I would have just been like, See, better than me. I, better person than me in every way. Look, I would have said that. You know what was, now that I'm thinking about it, why I didn't start with that? Why? It wasn't that I pissed on myself. It was that I pissed on the floor. <laughs> so I'd have to say to the so venue good. owner, yeah, 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 sorry, I just had a bit of drip mist there. So are we good for October or? What happened to the Geordies I grew up with that will do anything for and a laugh, And also, let's Geordies. be real, that wasn't the You're first right. time someone What's pissed on, on that man? Floor? I don't need a Tony Robbins seminar. I just need to hang out with you. <laughs> you need me to piss on yourself. Make a big deal out of it. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be the opposite set of my Twitter. It's like, now I want you to sit down and eat as many Doritos as you can. Unless <laughs> I can see a small slew of dust, like the dust storms in Australia a few years ago, you're not passing this course. Yes. <laughs> and instead of jumping, you're not napping enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Day. Now, make sure that you sleep. I've got a word for you, Jordan. I know, I know you're not going to like it, but unless you want to, like, if, if you want to levitate to the next level of success, then you have to get your over overcome your fear of it. One word, burrito. You're just like, <laughs> no, you're like that's your word, though. That's your safe word. Yeah, yeah, it's my word. That's why I'm training yeah, him you. Breaking me up into groups where I have to talk to a bunch of mums from Mexico and the U.S. About some women's gym. Well, that's part of it. For those of you and asking, cactus. Jordan is attending a Tony Robbins seminar virtually, and that's what we're talking about. But look, I don't know how I'm here. Y- y- it I is, don't know look, why I'm here is, anymore. It's too deep. <laughs> so now I'm gonna get you to even focus on something even more deep. Actually, it's not that deep. So the Warren, what's the Warren Gubba Dam? What's the pronunciation? No idea. The dam. The, the big. No, know. the biggest dam. Warren Gamba. Wait, 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 wait. Before we get into that, just just really quickly, I I, I can't let this go. Yeah, why did you pilot. tell him? What? To, to, to do the piss joke. Why weren't you like- Dude, you Because gotta... I was just laughing. Yeah. Right? I couldn't stop laughing. He was laughing. incapacitated. But see, that's the- Even that's... when we came back home and I was like, do, do you remember? I just, I got incapacitated. But you, you didn't again. put two and two together. You're laughing your ass off. Maybe other people would laugh. No, I couldn't. Con- I couldn't. I couldn't. This is why I have to go on tour with you from now on. Fuck. But dude, the fuck, the most fucked up thing happened for the last uh, tour. Yeah, expose <laughs> his, him. His fucking clicker wasn't working. 
So I had to like be on the different end of the fucking venue, and his clicker wasn't working because the techie table was just too far away from. Yeah, and they were like, what did you do? Million. Dude, I had to sit there with the fucking keyboard, oh, time each and every one legend, of his jokes. Legend. And the thing was, he, you know what? He only screwed up about five percent of the slides, you're and amazing. most of them were because you had to go back and forward on the slide. Dude, yeah. good job. Other than that, he did. He got. I don't know. I'm guessing like. 585 out of 600 slides correct. And the thing was, he, Dude, good Jordan, job. Jordan would do like this pointer thing to when to change the slide. But the problem was, he'd be doing his joke and then at the end of it, he would do that. But the thing is, his action of doing that, then it registering with me and then me changing the slide, the joke wouldn't work because the timing wasn't right. So you had to fucking <sighs> almost predict when he's about to do that to change the slide. Mm. Fuck. What, what show? It ended up working out. Like, it, it was a really good what show. What show was this? It was a really good show. Where was it? The, yeah, that was at that uh, the punk rock, rock uh, But what venue. suburb? I don't know, but I love that. Wait, venue. was this just uh, now? Like, oh, so this was just now? Yeah, like what the last show. Oh, shit, dude. I thought, damn, I thought, I thought this was like a year ago. That's... Well, Bell Colin, kind of no big loss there. Really. No, no, it was. It ended up being a really good show. But anyway, yeah, sorry, yeah. I'm com- I'm going to come back to this point. So the uh, the the dam overflowed, right? Because obviously the flood was just too insane for it. Right. So then Gladys and a lot of people that live, you know, the Penrith area. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of. Uh, it's a big it, valley. It's a big valley, right? So it got flooded because of the dam water. So then Gladys came out and started criticizing, initially at least the management of the dam saying like, you knew that these rains were coming. Uh, Weather predictions are, you know, almost extremely accurate now. Why did you not let um, the, keep the dam capacity at 25%? So when the rains would come, we would not have all of these people flooded. The dam management are saying, first of all, you don't know anything about how this works. You do realize getting rid of 75% off a damn water. It's a flood. It's like, it's not only a flood. It's like, in order to safely do that, it would take 300 uh, days. And Whoa, so you're saying that shit. we start you risking. And time. what if like the weather uh, report was kind of, it? what if like it didn't work out? Then we would have most of Sydney, uh, in fact, all of Sydney and a fair bit of New South Wales with no water at all. Shit. So then, and then Gladys, I think she's retreated a bit back, but... Initially, she was getting a lot of flack for like, uh, you know, because the optics are pretty bad. They apparently spent like, I don't know, several hundred million dollars on that uh, Hawkesbury uh, bridge, which was supposed to be flood proof. Like they designed it to be flood proof. And that was the first thing that got flooded. Oh, so Gladys shit. was under fire and then she pinned it on dam and, and the dam experts are like, you don't know a damn thing, Gladys. Damn. Anyway, that's what happened. Damn, damn, damn. And Gladys has been silent ever since. Fuck. There you go. Well, that's. Can they like keep any of this? <laughs> I love that. That's like. That's a premier's tired job, isn't it? Whinging, talking about infrastructure until they get voted out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They built a lot. They've built a lot of fucking apartments in Zetland. It's an infrastructure of type, isn't it? Yeah. It's just like corporate. Instead of giving people. I don't know, a nice vegetable korma curry. They're just giving them fairy floss. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the fairy floss of infrastructure. Corporate handouts, right? Sure. This, this apartment block probably is made of fairy floss. You reckon, like, you could just yeah. punch that through. Yeah. They'd just be Hansel and Gretel in there, just being like, thank you. <laughs> I was getting Do claustrophobic. you know where the German woods are? Ah, uh, well, and <laughs> while, while on that topic about premiers and infrastructure, Gladys oh. has been referred to ICAC... Once again. Really? Three times. Yeah, because, um, well, this is like legitimate stuff. So I can't saying that believe all of it. the things, uh, there were like several million dollars, close to like hundreds of millions of dollars funding that was approved by Gladys for the now disgraced MP, uh, you know, the oh, bad mate. boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Which is McGuire. And, um, Lizzie. And, she, and she didn't have um, she had like she was in a relationship with him for four or five years or whatever <laughs> and she never declared the conflict of interest so they've sent her back to ICAC so it remains to be seen what happens after that there is one good news the good news is that I always told Jordan that I don't think Gladys is going to lose the elections because my mom who is very apolitical doesn't know shit about Australian politics looked at Gladys and would say 
I kind of like this lady. I think I uh, when I think I might vote for her. Yesterday I sp- uh, I was she was, Gladys was on and she was like, "You know what? I changed my mind. I don't believe her anymore." <laughs> so mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe the tide is changing. Mm. Well, uh, apparently like Scomo's dropped like 13 points in the polls of popularity or whatever. What? So that just means from 78 to 62. Something like that. I don't know. Something like that. No, yeah. I don't think it's I think it's lower than that. I think it's I like think eight much lower. Fifty four percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you think still creaming fucking Albo? No, no, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say creaming. They're not. It's not creaming level. It's handsomely closer. beating. No, it's getting close. It's getting close. The, it's the getting board. neck and but neck. But my question is, Jordan, I don't because you've been following elections since the fucking I don't know whenever. Is it possible? Has it ever happened that a party that is popular in the polls? But the preferred prime minister is not theirs; it's the opposite, and have ended up winning the elections. Almost always, almost always, the preferred PM is the PM. That's what I'm asking you. So almost always. So basically, unless Albo climbs ratings and actually ends up defeating Scomo in the polls, he's not going to win. No, I mean, everyone always says that Keating was really unpopular. He wasn't unpopular. Labor was unpopular. He was more popular than Howard. Why was Labour unpopular? Just been in for so long, and uh, well, the same thing as always. The press had turned against him. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, I think Whitlam might have been more popular. Kevin Rudd was more popular than Howard. That's crazy. So like you that's almost so that's something that you really should be doing. Like you, you should have the preferred PM if you want to guarantee a win. Because that's what happened. Yeah, it's probably last more important than opinion polls. No, that's not true. Uh, no, because every other election, again, Howard beat Keating. Uh, Rudd beat Howard. No, wait, sorry, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, like yeah. preferred. No, sorry, Tony Abbott beat Kevin Rudd. So I'm, I'm just delirious. I've, yeah, I've yeah, had two yeah. hours sleep Tony, in the last four days. Tony Abbott was not the preferred PM. No. A Rudd was. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. So there is an exception. So there's hope. But what do you mean preferred PM? But like by by just by personality, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh. And I think there was one brief period where the Telegraph did a really skewed poll and said, It's official. Tony Abbott is preferred PM <laughs> by a margin of error, one point. Oh really? And that was in the thick of their assault on Kevin Rudd. But by that by that logic, then Albo will win it. No one likes Scomo right now. No, that's not true. But he's still the preferred PM. Says there's a lot more people that don't like him, but still right, majority okay, of the okay. people I think right. not they don't I don't think they like the Liberal Party. I think they prefer Scomo over Albo. That's the That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh wait, wait. No, uh, sorry, 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 my bad. I, yeah, yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Anyway, so Get I was the, well look, well yeah. it remains to be seen. Um, well, yeah, in yeah. other news. There are calls within New Zealand to label Australia as a rogue nation. Like in Star Wars? <laughs> like in Pretty a, much. What the hell does a rogue relation? nation mean? Well, it basically means We that, are a rogue nation. Well, that's... But not for the reasons that you might be thinking of. What the They're, hell are you talking about? Well, you know how recently... Uh, I think it may have been Peter Dutton who um, deported a 15-year-old back to New Zealand. And we've been constantly deporting we have this thing called a character test and any permanent resident that have, that might have been living here for, I don't know, 15 years, 20 years, if they fail a character test, which could mean any kind of criminal history, you're sent back to New Zealand. Just New Zealand? Just Kiwis? Well, yeah, a lot of them, a lot of Kiwis live here, so I think it impacts, <laughs> but they could technically do that with anyone. It doesn't get into news. New Zealand has like a, since the population of Kiwis in Australia is large enough, it gets into the news more often. Um, but Jacinda Ardern is not a fan of this policy, uh, and recently they deported a 15-year-old, by which by most international laws is completely illegal and against human rights. You cannot Hash deport feet. minors <laughs> into a place that um, that they might not have any experience over and might not have any family, blah, 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 shit like that. And so New Zealand is like, Australia is a bad player in terms of climate change. Australia is clearly violating human rights. And not just in this case, like all the offshore detention center, Minas Island, Papua New, all of that stuff. Basically, Australia, they're saying, let's admit it. They're not a good international player right now. And uh, and we need to make that clear in the international community that they are, according to them, 
we are a rogue nation now. What is the definition of a rogue nation? Well, a nation that is not working towards solidarity with other nations, but is a, a nation that is working towards Is America anarchy. a rogue nation? Well, it's a matter of opinion, was under right, Trump, really. definitely. Right, yeah. The thing is, Australia won't be a rogue, would not, but, but if, like, if New, North Korea is a known rogue nation. Right. What that means is uh, they have sanctions on them, so they can't sell their stuff. It, it's, it's actually really, really bad for a country to be considered a rogue nation because... Yeah, basically it means that you're not going to be able to earn a lot of money because of it. But really, whether you're yeah, excluded from it, trade or something, yeah, you can be excluded. Preconditions of free trade agreements are often that you're not. Is China a rogue nation? Well, look, unless your country is super <laughs> insignificant, you're not really a rogue nation because China. They're trying to make China into a rogue nation now, but China is too big to be actually considered a rogue nation. Because you need to have like the international community all together towards considering this one. Yeah, like yeah, Iran yeah. is considered a rogue nation, you know. So you really need to be isolated before it happens. Do you think that having that 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 law to just extradite people on the character is gonna it, it would would uh, reduce crime? Well, probably not. It remains to be seen. Really, it's, it's sort still of like, a, like I we're gonna. I think like in about four or five years, we're gonna have like more um, data on how. Because if you think about it, this entire policy of, you know, haphazard deportations has only begun since, what, 2013, 2014? And, um, and initially it was very focused on all of the boat people. And uh, we've only very recently just started to... What we're doing is basically we're exporting our problem. So if we see a New Zealand person, Kiwi, commit some crime... We're hoping for. I didn't know Kiwis could commit crimes. Are you kidding? They're so like such chill people. They tend to be the. You, you know the. Uh, what are the two Maori gangs called again? Oh, true. The Maori. Yep, yep, yeah. yeah, yeah they're like, called, but, but to like, be fair, dude, it's I, not the Maoris that are really getting deported. It's mostly. No, no, no. But like, this yeah. is just a side point about New Zealand. You're talking about like the Mount Druid gang or something? That, that the rap group? <laughs> what one four? Yeah, one four. Yeah, new entrance. No, new I can't remember what they're called. Maka Med, no, that's that's Chris Lily. I can't remember. I, I don't. But the thing yeah. is, I was talking to a lawyer here whose uh, dad is a prominent judge in New Zealand, and she was saying that the legal system in New Zealand is so overwhelmed by these two factions of bikies that are fighting each other in New Zealand that he was saying that the or in Australia the job in New Zealand right. The job of the legal system in New Zealand is to act as referees between these two. So they kind of have to make sure that they're getting like an even amount of quotas. Otherwise, they'll come in and be like, oh, what? So you're arresting all of these mucker mad boys, but you're not arresting any of these bra boys or whatever they are. Yeah, so just gotta, yeah you're right. You're right, Cooney. Uh, you're going to jail as well. What? Right, everything's fair now. Are you kidding? Because they don't want them coming together ever because if they did... The New Zealand military would be overridden. The old playbook, oh. divide and rule. Dude, that it's actually is pretty badass. That's Mad Max. I'm kind of no. Of, it's not Mad Max. It's Warriors. It's the movie The Warriors. Warriors. Having said that, there is Mount Play. You guys want to miss Long back? He's back. He's right here. It is Juris. This is like where Beast Wars Whoa, came yes. back. Sorry, God. No, I just want Great to add film. that there is no evidence to suggest <laughs> that people in New Zealand commit more crimes in Australia. I just want to put that War out. crimes. Not war crimes, more crimes oh, in Australia. Oh, sorry, sorry. So the really? fact that we are... Yeah, I don't... Uh, there must be some evidence that one of us is committing more crimes. Well, there are bikey gangs in in, uh, in, in Australia. There are bikey gangs in Australia too. Bikey gangs, no, but I'm just rough. wondering statistically per capita... I have no He's idea. Committing more well, crimes. I'll be I'd Jamie, and why don't do you it? Look Miss at Love, make up. some sounds, and I'll quickly look this up. Can you, can you do the you do the you do the bottles? I'm basing this purely off of nothing. The fact that all I know about uh, New Zealand is that your prime minister's teeth are too big for her head. <laughs> In the meantime, <laughs> give me your impersonation of that character. Can you, I'll do the I'll do the bottles. Can you, can you, can you, can you, can you. Whoa, we guys. <laughs> Come out K to K play. K I'm a K bad K little boy. 
Yo, Cyrus has got some stuff down. We can't be packing. No bopping when we get to the when we get to Manhattan. You know, the only takeaway that I have is the takeaway that I have about everything. It's pretty much the same as New Zealand. It is the Warriors because <laughs> the thing that I was most enraptured by in that film was fuck they all have bad teeth. <laughs> what in the Warriors? I think just in the 70s, it must have been before they started putting fluoride in the water. And I thought, Alex Jones, is this the world that you want? Well, or probably, these ratty little nubs? It probably wasn't the fluoride. It was probably that like flossing wasn't a cultural phenomenon. You know what I mean? Flossing is not a cultural phenomenon with me. <laughs> it, it really should be, though. All right, we've got some results over here. It turns out that in terms of gun crime, New Zealand is much higher. But Suck murder deep. rates are much higher in... Uh, in, in Australia. So that means, I guess, yeah, more people are actually getting killed over here. Rapes are more uh, Yeah, but is this per capita or not? This, all per capita. Uh-huh. Um, so we're worse when it comes to rape. Um, but there are more gun crimes over there. But I'm guessing that's because they just... Um, uh, their, uh, their gun laws have recently changed. Whereas ours were changed much Look, before that. Look, it's just in direct relation to... It's comparable either way is what I'm saying. So yeah, there's but no it's comparable particular reason. into what the government has done about it here. Mm. Don't you reckon? So it's just, it's such a good counter argument to, <laughs> America. I don't know, like libertarianism. Because if there's libertarianism, gun crime goes up as does rape and murders. But if you uh, invest in police instead of defunding them, and you hated Howard. <laughs> it's the one thing where everyone's like, ah, gun He lore. banned the guns. Yeah, 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 this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you know he banned the Come here, come here. He banned the guns, I'm mate. No, 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 no. Listen, no, no, mate. No, 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 no. no, no. no you, you haven't heard yeah, the whole he, story. Just come closer. Look, hey, as a Muslim, Howard I'm is. not a fan of that. Hey, I look, would need guns <laughs> any moment. You never look, know. No one in this podcast is a fan. <laughs> I'm just saying what his record is. <laughs> I'm just telling you that, you know, Howard was an all be. Okay. Clearly no, not. no, 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 I would really like <laughs> to live in a country where when our cricket team wins, you go outside and everyone's shooting AKs in the air. <laughs> Is that what happens in Pakistan? Yeah. Yes. And Don't, people die. Because the bullets time. just like, just you fall know, Someone will come down being like, ah, what a beautiful day in Karachi. No. <laughs> <laughs> Smoke as thick as the eye can see. <laughs> Jesus. I wish that was that like a joke. It's, it's not a That's brutal, joke. brutal, dude. All right. Uh, in other news, uh, so here's, here's... A man got his head exploded by a random <laughs> bullet. Have you seen Have you seen the, the next, possibly the next North Korean leader? No. So wait, wait, wait. Basically what? what's happening is... What, is Kim Jong-un Nor dead? No, no, he's not dead. So what's happening is that <laughs> people did not... Uh, the, 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 the lobby within North Korea that was against the US was not happy with Kim Jong-un being too chummy with Donald Trump. And so there's they've, they've put this forward, this new face, which is this chick who is Kim Jong-un's sister. What? Dude, she looks menacing. Whoa. And she... Can she, you get a photo of her? She, yeah, yeah, I'll bring out a photo. I would uh, like for to For the see audience, that. check out the photo too. But basically, she is just a fierce woman. And she just... <laughs> this is what she told um, uh, Joe Biden. As soon as Joe Biden came in, she was like... Uh, she warned US not to cause a stink now that Joe Biden is there. What does that mean? It means like don't be a potty pooper. Essentially, she's she's basically tough eyeing Joe Biden, and she's saying, um, "Jesus, that, how, uh, so so Kim Jong Un is not to uh, tough this, enough." This this is the lady. Whoa, she's she looks, Kim Jong Un's sister. Is that yeah, the, that's uh, Kim Jong Un's sister? She thing? looks yeah, she like was fucking murderer. She <laughs> looks <laughs> insane, and the military basically they're saying that there were news reports recently that ooh Kim Jong Un is feeling sick because he has too many chocolates and too much uh, liquor, and uh, maybe this lady is now going to be the supreme leader. So there, there is a huge effort to get rid of Kim Jong Un and bring she in looks this like lady. The character from The Grudge, dude. She's Who, scary. Who's pushing for this? Generals. Generals and generals that are against um, normalizing relations with uh, North Korea. Because North Korea... So some generals are into it. Yeah, a lot of generals are really into it. It, it really depends because the thing that happened with Kim Jong-un is that Kim Jong-un is being looked at as like kind of stupid because the US under Trump said, yes, we will start negotiations with North Korea. But the negotiations always started with... So the negotiation is about completely denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula which is just a non-starter for North Koreans. So the North Koreans are like, 
all these negotiations are bullshit because it's about how we are bad. The negotiations need to be give and take. The U.S. does not seem to be giving anything over here. We are too afraid to get rid of our nukes because we've seen what happened to Saddam. We've seen what happened to Gaddafi. We've seen what happened to most of the anyone that strong arms the U.S. and is not big enough to hold their own. They fucking come in and they change the regime. And the nuclear button is the only it's basically a suicidal mission. Like that's the only thing that keeps our um, regime intact. Mm. And Kim Jong Un was basically trying in a way to appease the US getting rid of that one suicide option. And so we need to keep that suicide option to keep some what if a level playing fields in any kind of negotiation. So the negotiation yeah, stupid. Why the fuck did he what an idiot. <coughs> why did he get rid of the nuke? Because I think he is he's like a peace loving man. He he went to he studied in Russia. He went he's been overseas. He likes basketball. He's like uh, why can't we just have more Nike? <laughs> and this chick, I think she saw the opportunity Jesus and she's just like, Christ. no, we're going to, we're going to fucking piss on the ashes. She, she, Miss Love is right. She looks like a character from the grudge. She is, and she's being pitched as that, that she is fierce. What? I think that's the, uh, I think that's the journalist that's trying to take you down. <laughs> Damn. Look, yeah, I, it, it, is it possible to leave North Korea? Uh, like if you're like yes, but like only with approval from the government. You can't just like yeah. leave because you want to. Is it is it still like, like you know you know what I hear as well? What? You ready to step on another landmine, boys? No, you don't want to. Well, go on. Should Sorry, we on? for those of you that are listening, Panthera. her name is Kim Yo Kim Yo Jong. So you can look at look her up. In she your looks own time. terrifying. But sorry, you were saying Jordan. Yeah, about people leaving uh, North Korea. No one's doubting that it's bad in North Korea, but... Oh, no. But Panthera. I've been hearing a lot that a lot of these uh, claims about how bad it is are greatly exaggerated because they're looking for citizenship in pretty much South Korea just to put shit on the North Koreans. Say, like, just ham it up heaps. And so they'll just be there and be like, my whole family. And it's not actually like What about that. the Vice documentary, man? What the fuck? So they just went in there and just like, check out this hotel. Dude, there was nothing, there was no difference between the Vice documentary and me going to Turkmenistan. It's just that we use more upbeat music. <laughs> yeah. Like, like look, what the hell's exactly. happening? Just going around being like, there's no one at that fucking <laughs> casino. What the fuck? Panthera, Panthera, Panthera. Yeah, but, but like, look, I will, I will agree with you on the extent that, look, every, when you're trying to make any state look an evil regime, everything about that state becomes unbearable. Like before, when we wanted to get rid of uh, Colonel Gaddafi, you were saying how horrible Libya is. And to be honest, you go to Libya now and you ask each one of them, they're like, Gaddafi's regime was amazing. Comparably. Gaddafi's regime gave subsidies on electricity. It gave I don't even think it's comparatively. It's just, like, look, dictate, I've always said this, dictators are good when they're not in America's pocket. Usually they just have a lot of resources and it's that same thing. It's just like, Look, one corrupt family is not as bad as hundreds of corrupt businesses. Hmm. They don't drain as many resources. And so as a result, they like, you know, how many fucking uh, Lamborghini speedboats do you need? <laughs> I'm going to say 600. And then after that, you know... What's 601 going to do? I mean, it, look, I got it in every shade of green. <laughs> you, you can look at, like, Russia's <laughs> example, right? Russia went from, like, this centralized dictatorship, and in the 90s, it went from that to basically a crude version of an oligarchy, which, to be fair, most countries are, including ours. It's Russia's oligarchy is more crude than ours, but we also live... So, so the, the point is... How much better is the oligarchic system in Russia compared to the centralized Bolshevik Soviet Union structure? It's I would say not that much of a difference. It was basically, it was so bad that they had to get someone like Putin to take them back to like a, a very Soviet style of governance minus all the communist rhetoric. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's, not to discredit that at all, because that's all very, that's their fair points, but it is my job to point out the irony that none of us would have a job if that was the case. No, we would. We'd just be sitting there talking about how sick Putin is. What's I would probably be in jail. Because I would, because I would say something that it's just be like, you didn't mention, you didn't, you said his shoes were white, but you didn't say they were very white. 
life in prison for me. Yeah, but then he'd just be walking past the prisons one day and he'd be like, Berishnikov? He's Berishnikov. <laughs> this is my cousin. Don't put him in again. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> no, I'm just pointing out the irony that like in Turkmenistan, you can't really be a comedian, can't be a musician. That's, but you, but you know be. what? But it's not you true. Like I would, I would kind of like look- But you know what? Fuck those people. I, like I'm at the point now where look, I'm like, I I'd take one for the team I complaining about too. the government. I'd just be sitting there doing the other half of my job, which is, you know, like, what's up with Eshkebet? It's so clean, huh? It's true. cleaner than my plates at home that I don't wash. <laughs> thank you, but thank you. I honestly think that's also a bit of like. It's funny, actually. It's funny. <laughs> that's all. Like in my opinion, and this is my opinion. This is it's a bit of Western propaganda when you know that happens. That oh, we live in such freedom where we can you know criticize the government, and if you were in some other country, you would be jailed. It's true. In if you say a certain things, you could be jailed. But what the difference is, our spectrum of debate might be slightly bigger than theirs, but we both live in restrictive spectrums yeah, of true. debate, right? That's true. And theirs, it's not that you can't criticize the government in these sorts of places. You can, because, you know, otherwise there would be any kind of changes in government. Like, you need every... You know what? Theirs country, is actually much more productive as well, well because that, you can't change is, the government. So you know what they criticize? Bureaucracies. They criticize they bureaucracies. They criticize like the train, the transit system. Well, to be Their honest, their spectrums like, yeah. are slightly different, but it is it is not it is not correct to say that by sheer by our existence automatically we would be in jail. Not true. I'm not saying that we would not be. You know what would be we would be doing? Like there are certain hot button issues even in Australia that we refrain from. That's going to happen over there too. The That's hot true. button issues might be different over there. And, then, and there might be more like, okay, you go to prison now instead yes, of Yes, and like yeah, if yeah. you criticize, and, and the repercussions could be serious in certain things. Over here, if you criticize, let's say the oligarchy too much, they get can cancel you. You're not going to have means of income. Over there, you might get poisoned. So mm. that's... Those distinctions are there. I'm not denying it. Mm. But what I'm saying yeah, but is... But it's the, also the thing that everyone always says, of, oh, in China, you know, you, you if you criticize the government, you go to jail. That is exactly what the liberals are trying to do now to whistleblowers. There's three whistleblowers, Agent J, Agent K, uh, Agent J and Agent K. Sorry, I'm too deluded. What the hell are what you talking about? Witness K and Witness J. Okay. But both of them are Mr. whistleblowers Thompson. of what happened in Afghanistan. And both of them are getting arrested without committing any crimes. Really? Yeah. The same thing happens here. It's just Holy what Ali shit. was saying. It's, okay. That's pretty, actually what George that's pretty mind -blowing. was saying about... That's pretty mind-blowing. He was always saying that his satires, everyone started reading into it, and it was part of the propaganda model of the day that they were saying, this is about Soviet Russia, and he was saying, yeah, Animal Farm was. Big Brother, the whole point of Big Brother is all of these governments pretty much operate in the same way. And I'm saying that in Britain, it's really not that different. Mm. And you could argue, like I would argue that hmm. 1984 is more about capitalist countries than communist countries because communist countries control as well, but theirs is way more direct. It's like straight up, if you if you talk about this, we will poison you, we will kill you, we will put you into jail. The 1984 book about the Big Brother was way more complicated. It was like how you can mind control. And if you look Thought at the world control. around today... It's prevalent more in capitalist countries. Like mind control is more prevalent in Soviet Union or even in today's Russia. Everyone knows what's up. Like they, there they are know that these guys are fucking with yeah. us over here. We genuinely believe that our government is doing great work for us. So I would argue that in 1984 way, is more true for us than them, mm. even though their control might be slightly more because it's more under a veil of uh, sort of. Because we justice, buy into it, justice we bought it, and truth, and we're like, "Yep, the ABC is." But don't you think? But doesn't that mean? You, but doesn't that mean you should be and skeptical even of the have, government? For fuck's sake, like it's called Big Brother in the in in the book, but here the ABC's name is Auntie. It's I didn't pretty know that. Fucking close, Auntie Donna. <laughs> I didn't know it was Auntie. I didn't know it was. Wouldn't that be amazing if the, the <laughs> fucking like? Hi, whatever his name is with the beard, uh, ends up becoming the next commissioner of the ABC. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, probably, he'd probably do a better, better bloody job. But don't you think? Uh, but isn't that? But but I thought you like really liked. Would you say you, you, your psychology is trusting governments generally, or is it more the, the role? No, of governments? my psychology is that look, every government. If you're over are here, are you skeptical? It's are you skeptical of government, even though you realize they have a significant, huge role? Do you know what I mean? Is no, it no, natural no. to be skeptical? Yeah, I'm, I am skeptical of government. But in this case, what I'm trying to say is that just this one thing that a lot of times every government, governments over here and governments in like Russia, China, in order to like convince you to follow their agenda, they like to make things simple. 
They like to paint pictures as no, I get good that. and bad. And usually the the opposing side is bad. And when they say that they're bad, they almost project a lot of things that might not necessarily be accurate. Or it needs more nuanced explanation to truly understand that. That does not work in our government's interest because why would they want you to sort of question all of that stuff? So we end up believing uh, if I was in China, I'd be in jail. You think every no, Australian I... ever would be in jail just by being in China? Do you know? No, but I'm saying you and Alex Jones aren't so different. He all all he is is a skeptic that is that doesn't believe the rhetoric of the government, doesn't believe that it's a you know pa- all like all all like powerful uh, just uh, democracy. Like he's skeptical of that, and I'm like. Yeah, Mish, but like that's our entire thing. We are skeptical. Like we, I'm saying, it's a good we thing. We work for friendly Geordies, which is an entire no, brand made on. I'm s- saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying, isn't there a conf- isn't there a s- no? I'm just trying to clarify yeah. because sometimes when you talk about your bloody like, you know, uh, communist utopias, it seems like even in a communist utopia, you have to be skeptical of the powers. I'll make one thing clear, and I want to make like I want to bring this out. The f- when I talk about like communism, I'm a communist. It's kind of a joke now. I'm not actually one anymore. At one point, s- I genuinely was. Like, I genuinely wanted to bring a revolution. But like, you know, you sort of evolve. I'm almost thirty years old, and if someone told me that do you want like a communist now a shirt business, yeah, now a successful. I sh- now I have a shirt business. You should be a capitalist. But, really. but what I'm saying is like, but some of those. But I learned a lot from my communist phase, and some of those ideals stick. So when if someone like this argument of like, oh, you criticize. Uh, the government that means you want a communist utopia not really actually I'm not I would that. be the first to say that that com- like the 20th century communist utopia is worse than the reality we're living in now but that does not make the reality that we're in today no 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 perfect All right? here's the thing don't you yeah, think not- that it might not actually be that different uh, if the government was a communist government in Australia the problem with the mean? problem with communism for me isn't necessarily uh, that I think the, the some of the economic principles are flawed. So there's a structural problem over there. So I'm not necessarily saying that a, a particular set of a communist government wouldn't be able to perform better than yeah. But uh, as you're saying, Australia. Putin pretty much just installed a very similar bureaucracy. There was no problem with the bureaucracy because what people but people don't realize is that they always say, "Oh, Putin is a dictator." Name me one time when Russia did not have a dictator. Mm. Like you are, you are talking about this mythical place where you know uh, Russia. Russia is democratic, so so they always had a dictator. And let's be real, they will have a dictatorship. That's how every country has different culture, and their political structures are based on that culture. So the dictator aspect of it isn't necessarily bad. And they did move back to like a communist understanding of how bureaucracy works. That wasn't wrong. I'm talking about the actual Marxist, some of the Marxist principles of how economies can grow was perhaps wrong. So you look at China today, China hasn't changed any of the stuff that they did in their communist period. But what they did was they revised the principles of the economics that the Marxist system was based on. So if someone tries to bring those exact same models today, and be like, okay, we just didn't do it right then, and now we can do it well. I'm highly skeptical of that. There was a pr- there was a problem with the theory itself. Dude, not my, necessarily. No, 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 what I'm saying, I'm saying, look, what Russia had running against it is it had a superpower that was a lot richer and more powerful than it was throughout the entire Cold War, that was constantly choking it economically, and it also had the fact that it's it's Russia, it's not America. So you basically just leave your. I don't know, if your entire country is a freezer, it'd be mad when you want snow pops. But other than that, it's not (laughs) really like the best, most bountiful country. So I'm saying if there was a Soviet-style government in Australia, I don't know if it would be that different to what it is now. In fact, I probably would imagine that we would be a lot richer than we are now. Dude, Um, my my question... That (laughs) remains to be seen. But I would say one thing, and I'm not advocating this in any which way, but I think... Australian uh, Australia can work in a dictatorship. There are certain countries that wouldn't be able to work in a dictatorship. So for example like places Pakistan. like India, Pakistan, they they're just too diverse. Like you cannot get a single clan or a single individual to be able to command so much power without individual rebellions because it's just too fucking diverse. Maybe 
a thousand years from now. Like maybe if you have a strategy like China, which is just like ignoring the differences, just making everyone Han through whatever, like in certain cases, even genocide. Australia is largely homogenous, which is why we a dictatorship could work over here. But I'll, I'll step back one second. It's like, I do not want that. I don't think that's a, the best way to run your country. Well, that's why we have differences of opinion. <laughs> that's fine. Dude, but my question was just how healthy is it? How, how, how skeptical should you be of governments? That's my question. That's oh, all I'm very, asking. All the time. You should be skeptical where, again, as someone that just criticized Marx, as Marx shit. It's question healthy to be skeptical. Everything. It's healthy to ponder, uh, to, yeah, to, to be skeptical, to ask questions, to, to explore ideas. Conspiracies in there, I mean, they can be dangerous, especially in the net, but like conspiracies at their heart are creative uh, exploration of alternative ideas. Surely, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, so that's all, oh, that's all I'm asking. I'm just asking like, all, all I'm asking, yeah, that's all I was asking. Like, it, like, I'm just saying you have a lot of similarities to character, you know, we all do to like, I'm glad you agree with that because I would have, you know, you're not that different to me or Alex Jones. <laughs> no, I, I genuinely dig democracy. Like I am, I, I'm Jordan, and, and I do sometimes question it because I'm clearly on the losing path. If you look around those democracies, they're uh, slow. And they're slow they're and fucking they're, they're actually shit. losing. Yeah. And if you look around, well, like, slow. I mean, if you look around some of the authoritarian <laughs> systems in the world today, they seem to be progressing. Did you? Hey, you know what, actually? <laughs> Sorry, because everyone's going to hate this. We, they hate it when we talk about this. But nuclear if you power. you see a better version of our argument, you should watch Bill Maher's second newest. I was just going to say that. I was Which just like going to say that. That's pretty much our argument, except for yeah. he's just. The thing I hate about fucking the internet is you just have to sit there and say everything sucks nothing's mad as soon as you say something's good everyone goes nuts yeah do yeah. they huh do they yeah what so if you, you won't ever give anything props unless it's a, an age celebrity that has turned into a meme and then so you can, no, you no, can no. be nice to them for about three only months. politics huh? only with politics yeah that's what i'm saying about politics yeah. so you could never say this system's better yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can't say that. Everyone just goes. Yeah, but what about? Have you have you seen well, his? Have you seen a, it though? A better way to fr- yeah, I have. I it's have. it is fucking. Dude, I, I live point. and breathe that. <laughs> yeah. rule I'm a big fan now. By the way, yeah. it just took me like ten years, but I'm a big fan. It's not. It's not. <laughs> what maybe maybe a better way to phrase it? It's not that the system is better, but it's more effective. Currently, that system is producing better results than our system is. So but that is better. Way better, and that is true. That's a that's a tough pill to swallow, but that doesn't mean you copy a different system. Why not? That's again a big pro- because every system there needs factors. to be needs to be based on local cultural beliefs. Because if you try to install a completely alien system that might be effective in another country, it would not work in your country. They're even more every, homogenous like than the us. Cu- Chinese culture is different to ours. They genuinely do not mind being. Like for example, they're like, like they're, they're, the popularity of the communist government in China super high. is insane. Yeah, because they, culturally they they don't mind being you know Jordan belongs there. You should really be there. Like they're, 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 their culture is like if like some government official comes out and he's like sorry and he's like uniform and just like yeah and then like you know you're eating a pop tart but you've eaten too much. He just goes Whoosh, and like whacks you on the back and they're just sort of like. I deserve that and walk around. Like, that's your paradise. I, I do. I, I really like when someone's just strict around and like when there's like whiny little brats, mm. they get punished for being whiny brats. But mm. I can assure you, misloves of this country will not be okay with <laughs> they right. will, and, and this is true. We've said people. this a million times before though, but <laughs> no one would have thrived more uh, uh, behind the Iron Curtain in this podcast than mislove. <laughs> My, my, you would have been fucking mad as well because you can just put your head down and be like, okay, I'm in this environment now, so um, I'll just fill out this form that's completely meaningless and I'll do that until I retire. I think like, I'd be good for a while, but then by the end I'd be like, hey, I want to listen to a Jimi Hendrix record. And they'd be like, that's it, life in prison. And I'd, then it wouldn't be so great. But that's not what happened in... See, this is the whole thing. You hate Tito, but Tito created the ideal paradise for Croatians. What, siphoning their tax dollars and like putting like 
Serbian bureaucratic control on all their resources. Yes. <laughs> because this is... I was just sitting there, your dad describing growing up under Tito's Croatia. Yeah. And he was... It's, this happened, dad came Isn't yeah. this amazing? He was saying that... It was very silly. I had to get up at 6 a.m. It was, I felt very tired. I had to go to work. So I was like, why can't we go to work at 9? Like they do in... Uh, in the U in in the US Australia maybe have some triple M's on the radio so you can listen to you two on the way so you go in there and then everybody is asleep they sleeps until maybe 10 11 but I kept to work and then one day one of the men he was in charge of building a sewer system or something and he, he really messed it up he really he destroyed the town by how bad it was and so I was yelling at him what the fuck what is wrong with you Bill what the fuck you do and then my boss come up to me and say, hey, leave Bill off alone, he's sleeping. Just, just. <laughs> <laughs> As that. if you wouldn't have thrived there. I would have. You I are probably. Homer Simpson. All he does is sleep at the, behind the fucking buttons. <laughs> you would have fucking loved that place. And then they were just like, yeah. uh, the only thing you would have hated is getting up. <laughs> but then you would just be like, I don't want to be at work. I don't want to be at work. <laughs> Go back to sleep again. Look, this is what the trajectory would have been. I would have cruised through life and I'd probably hit like 40 and have some midlife crisis about being like, no, I need the, 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 the like hard self-help neo, you know, neo capitalist, like, uh, f like free market kick up my ass. Cause, the, cause it inspires me to do things and that's how I actually get things done. And then I'd probably do that for a while and be like, nah, I like sleeping more and then go back to it. Or yes, that's the trajectory. Or, I would just be like, no, you need to rock out. And these people, even as much as I like sleeping, going to sleep slightly less. And that's why the system's broken because I should be moved up because I'm sleeping slightly less. That'll probably happen. No, but it wouldn't actually. I didn't enjoy dad, most of it though. Your dad used to go there, work from six till two p.m., go home and do his art for like eight hours. And he was like, it was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. Yeah. I had a job where no one gave a fuck if I did the job or not, and then I just played around with art. It was a hell. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I think that's pretty much Dole. That's what Dole's like, right? I just think living off of the government. It is like that, but uh, you, you, that's not really... He at, those at that point, he had like dreams of being like a really successful uh, architect, and that environment was not good for that. You know what's amazing? He is the main character of Ayn Rand's Fountainhead. What the hell's that? It's like the literature of, uh, you know, libertarian in the US. It's this oh. fictitious novel writer from Russia. I should read it. Wait, just wasn't it? What, I think it was the other book that you're referring to. Anne no, Rand Atlas Shrugged. Atlas I don't Shrugged. know what that's about, but Fountainhead is about an architect that lives in a Soviet oh, okay. country. Dude, that's <laughs> is it really? Yes. That's basically the same book as Atlas Shrugged, because Atlas Shrugged was that. It's my that dad's like life. Every... Uh, executive just boycotts and says, all right, you want to do it with others? You do it. And then the entire system but collapses. See, this is so pathetic because yes, he's an artist and I do, I guess, empathize with the fact that he didn't get to make nice buildings, but come on. How much better is it that there is a government sitting there instead of people being like, I just want to put a yellow stripe down this building because it's kooky and I like Andy Warhol. Ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll be $6 million. You know? <laughs> You can still like, do instead that. of doing that yeah, shit. Yeah. How much better is it that the government's like, no, these people need a sewer. You're building a fucking sewer, and they're like, ah, all right. I'll give you this. There's positives and negatives. If you're if you're Tony Robbins, it's fucking negative. If you're 95 or 90 percent, he of, was Croatian. Holy shit! But if you're Tony Robbins, yes, there, that would be hot. some cabbie. Yeah, that would. Yeah, he'd be a cabbie. He, he'd be poor. Maybe not poor, but he oh, wouldn't oh, be doing well. What do you think of this argument? But, that but wait, 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 you just, should work for the ninety-five percent rather than the five. Well, I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say, the ninety percent uh, would be taken care of, and that's why everyone says that communism is the moral, Marxism is the moral imperative. It's the right, the moral thing to do. I'm not disagreeing with that necessarily on a, like a basic level. Like, yeah, I think if America is the alternative, it's brutal. No healthcare, like dilapidated buildings, like. The 1%, like d horrible, like brutal living conditions. If there's two sides to that story. And like, I think the middle ground is the best. I think like some form of- Every man. 
And I bet you everyone listening to this is like, yeah, yeah, yeah some kind of Yeah, but everyone always says that. But I'm saying that the middle ground is China. <laughs> China did create well, the middle ground. I'm they kind of moving like, more and more towards Authoritarianism that. mixed with uh, UK and Gamble, that kind In of shit. In a weird way, I'm kind of moving more and more towards that thought because I see how slow and bureaucratic and uh, our society is and also how like the media just run everything and just dictate the culture and it's just manufacturing consent and it's just like these sort of like is this is this a controversial statement so so i i understand yeah i'm moving towards that more and more because at least at least things get fucking done but is is this a controversial statement the <sighs> monopoly of governance should remain with the government that is not the case in As, Australia. Yeah, dude, yeah. I honestly think that that's the best outcome. I think it's better than oil companies and oil coal companies, running the show. Yeah, I agree, companies. Companies. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. I think that like- But you I, know what though? I hope it doesn't get too far though, because I don't want, I, I, I worry that they then, then that'll turn into like Mao, but I there's no say, Mao in China right now. Dude, by the way, I've been reading Mao's book. It's fucking funny. Because <laughs> like you think it's like Mao Selected Works, volume one. And, I, and I'm not even kidding. Like most of that book is- uh, Chiang Kai shek sucks balls, and how much I am better than that <laughs> asshole. <laughs> Fuck. So it's basically Kevin Rudd's the PM. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. It hey, is. what's the difference? Do hey? you want to add? <laughs> do you want to add the last bit because we're out of time? What? Do you want to add anything else? We're out of time. Well, I don't know. I was just about to say that maybe it's the three days of Tony Robbins brainwashing, but he does really inspire you to realize what. The human spirit is possible, like is capable of doing. Mm. If there is any argument as to why the US is a good system, it's a Tony Robbins five day seminar of yeah. business management. That's right, though. Because but, but that's my point. It's the, like the man is so impressive, and you just you kind of do realize that if human beings are allowed to do whatever the fuck they like, you will get a few Tony Robbinses, and. I don't know. That, I, I do think that actually the more and more I look at society, the more I realise, like, I, I think Jordan Peterson actually does have the ultimate point, which is just like, if everyone wasn't such a shit cunt, society would be pretty fucking good. I think <laughs> I think it's a... I and, think it, don't you think that that's true? And on true? that note, do not be a shit cunt. Become a patron. Yeah. So you can hear Miss Love's... Literal haphazard fucking can I, mad can I have a f- And once again, if you want to start- As if you a, didn't get enough for free. If you yeah. want to start a fundraiser for my car, like I said, I am not opposed to that idea. Can Make I, sure you can give generously to that, as generously as you give to ARC, but then chuck a couple more box, bucks at Ali's um, uh, Tesla because they do cost more than hay. <laughs> can I- Can I, I just become a patron. Can I have the final thought, even though Jordan should have it? Because I, I just have a good way yeah, of putting it. Yeah, do it, do it. Clearly, uh, I'm firing you, you deserve dude, it. Dude- Personal responsibility uh, is imperative, as is government responsibility. Just a mix. I swear that's... Why is that such a controversial statement? But I that's hate it. that when people come onto my self-help channel and yell at me about that. It's like, dude, go back to Reddit. Yeah. Like, this That's the way forward in life. Tony Robbins like, with you like... You have to give a bit in the government in terms of just getting over your fucking ego because the whole thing is I just don't... I'm nowhere near as motivated as Tony Robbins. Again, 62-year-old man, uh, esophagus melted when he was 30, getting up while doing aerobics, just being like, okay, now, this is what you need to know about tax minimization. Like, it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> that is what the human spirit is capable Dude, how about, of. That's what I'm do, don't you think the maddest cabinet... Like, this? do you think this would be the perfect cabinet it, like in the world? Or let's just say an example of America. Bernie Sanders, president, vice president, Jordan Peterson. <laughs> yeah. I do think that that'd be the perfect world. Because it's government responsibility. Yeah. Sure. Maybe it's, there's a danger of reckless mismanagement and misspending. Who cares? It's not going to be an ounce of what big oil and the Koch brothers and coal and all these lobbies have or the banks. So just shut up about that. And then you got Robin's there just being like, and also personal responsibility as well as healthcare. But you know what I think that he's actually fucking right in that Jordan Peterson's big gripe with politics, because he's a psychologist and he's always, I was just listening to him talking about it. Yeah. He's fucking right that identity politics do fucking destroy the fabric of a society. 
It creates a complete us and them mentality. Um tribalizes people, breaks them up. Yeah, yeah, that does happen. And it just plays into people's egos, makes people petty. Yeah, It yeah. makes society much worse. And yes. the thing is, Bernie Sanders isn't above playing into identity politics, so he does need that vice president. That's what I'm saying. Like, oh, you cleaned your office. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The White House is looking messy. <laughs> I think I've nailed it. In fact, Finn and, and like, I'm the smartest person on wor- in the world. And when and Trump Sanders- dies... After he dies, the new king will be Tony Robbins, who thinks to his health system formula will probably be alive until 600 years old. <laughs> Hopefully. I, I, I think yeah. that we've covered king it. King of America. All right, I really think see you guys. Covered. Thanks for listening in, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.